Good evening and welcome to the school committee meeting tonight, Monday, February 23rd. We will begin, oh, the meeting is being recorded and for LCTV and is being live streamed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that, that part wasn't added. That's why I'm like, did we not live stream this time? So it should be being live streamed as well. But let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Long Meadow School Committee maintains educational policies that foster continuous improvement by challenging and supporting all children in a safe and caring learning environment enabling them to reach their highest potential and to become productive citizens. Through effective communication and positive relationships, the Long Meadow School Committee will make informed decisions in the best interest of the students, the schools, and the Long Meadow community. So to begin this evening, um, we'll start with Mr. Tom Landers to give an update on what's going on at LHS. The better question is what's not going on at LHS? Um, let's let him talk about what is first. Good evening. Um, um, Rachel Doyle often asks us uh, for various schools to give updates on the positive happenings, and um, we are have been engaging in some vertical planning and uh, hopefully improved transition between the eighth grade and the high school. And, and I asked if I could give a quick update on that. So um, that's what it is. I, I want to acknowledge quickly uh, the work of our guidance counselors and the guidance counselors at the middle school, uh, Donna Lyons, the director of guidance, and Bridget Dulé, guidance counselor at Glenbrook Middle School, and Mary Morrissey, uh, guidance counselor at Williams Middle School. Um, who came up with that idea of sort of a formal step-up day. And I'll talk a little bit about that, but um, I, I will just say for the, since the beginning of the year, our teachers, our department chairs have been working with the middle school coordinators and the teachers at the middle school to uh, look at what we do, how we do it, and if we could get more information into the hands of teachers and students and parents and guidance counselors and make the transition a better one. Uh, there's been a lot of work involved in curriculum, looking at uh, Common Core, the potential transition from MCAS to PARC. Um, as you know, uh, the Common Core has affected, has more of an impact in the math curriculum in the sense that the math has been pushed down, so that transition has been ongoing for several years, but they continue to do work in that area. And uh, they've done a lot of work on vertical transition and, and have good conversations and dialogue about things like uh, what are pro appropriate prerequisites as students um, try to move up and to take Algebra 1 or uh, Geometry or Algebra 2, depending on where they are in their, in their math career. Um, but a lot of work has gone on uh, since the beginning of the year in that area. And uh, today, we, we took the next step, which we invited all the eighth graders from the two middle schools uh, to LHS between 9 and 10 a.m. And they met us. They saw the physical facility. They met our department chairs. They got to listen to administrators and meet counselors. And we talked to them about um, the opportunities that they're going to have, the choices that they're going to make for their schedules. We talked about the concept of balance. We asked them to consider uh, if they're going to be playing a fall sport at, in the high school in the fall. We asked them if they were going to be a music student and, and if, they were, if they were, if they were going to have a night commitment, as, as many of our music classes do, not all, but many. We asked them, we informed them about all the clubs. We have over 40 clubs, active clubs at LHS, which we talked to them a little bit about today. And we asked them to consider if they were going to be involved in those clubs. And we asked them to consider their areas of strength, their passions, and their areas of interest. And to go back and take the information that we gave them today, talk to their parents, talk to their teachers, talk to their guidance counselor, uh, because they're going to start the, the process of scheduling this week. Um, and it, I think it went well. We got good feedback from um, the counselors and, and again, um, the guidance counselors and, and the administrators, Chris Collins and Nicole Allen, were very helpful in, in, in planning this. Um, and, and lastly, I would say on Wednesday night, we'll continue the tradition that it's been going on for years to have our eighth grade parent night. So in addition to uh, meeting with the students, we'll meet with uh, eighth grade parents. 
Uh, it's open to all incoming ninth grade uh, parents, but it's particularly helpful to parents who have never had a student at the high school. And we try to relieve fears and give them information and walk them through uh, the difference between the levels, what it means to be in an honors course, what it means to be in a second level or third level, what the expectation for homework is going to look like what time management consideration should be taken into place, into, um, into consideration. And after they meet us for about a 20 minute presentation in the auditorium on Wednesday night, we will break out and we have tabletop presentations in the cafeteria. And parents get to visit and meet face to face with teachers and department chairs and ask questions and hopefully alleviate any anxieties that they have, but, but leave more informed than, than they came. Um, so we're, we have a full court press going on in terms of making the transition f to, for eighth graders better. Um, I, I just want to acknowledge quickly some, some people who have been particularly uh, diligent in this area this year. Uh, in, in English, Mark Cormier, our department chair, and Anita Kimball, uh, six to eight coordinator for English, have been working. Uh, in many cases, Mark and Anita have communicated and met and, and chatted, and in some cases, they've also included teachers, and that's uh, applicable to everyone that I'm going to mention. Um, in math, Meredith Laughlin and Susan Newton have worked uh, together, social studies, Megan Schwartz and J.R. Golan, and in science, Jamie DeBurn and, and Pam Novak. There's also been communication between art and music um, and world language as well, but the, the, the subjects of ELA, math, social studies, and science have done a lot of formal meeting and a lot of formal work on curriculum and vertical planning. So I just wanted to update the committee. Um, on, on that, we're proud of that. We hope that, that um, it helps our students make more informed decisions. One of the things that we want to avoid is we have a lot of uh, we have students oftentimes who come in and they're excited and they may take a course and, and they might have to change their schedule in late September, or early October. We want to avoid that. It, they have to that will have repercussions for the rest of their schedule. So we uh, I think we've done a good job historically, but this was an area that was identified by our school councils. Um, this is an area that was identified by our guidance counselors at both levels. So this is an area we wanted to, to focus on and improve. So hopefully that will, uh, that will result from the, the steps that we've taken. I'd like to thank Tom for his work in communication and transitions. I, I think one of the things we've talked about is how to help eighth graders become more acclimated to the high school. So this is one area that you've really focused on. In addition, I think I think parents of the high school noticed that Tom's been putting out newsletters, plus he and his team have been sending articles to the Longmeadow News, which has really enhanced the community's awareness of the great things happening at the high school. So I appreciate all that you're doing in that area. It's really helping out, I think. We have an outstanding high school. It's nice to see people understanding why it is so special. And I know, Tom, before we started the meeting, there were some questions um, about students who might be in private school this year who would be transitioning to LHS next year. Right. So could you share that information with, sure. with the public since we're being televised? So uh, the scheduling process for all eighth graders uh, in Longmeadow, public or private school, will start this week. And um, we started today's step up program as a pilot with the two public middle schools. Uh, we did have some students from St. Mary's and Heritage Academy uh, attend today, but next year we'll expand that formally to every school, number one. And number two, no matter if you're in a public school or a private school, the guidance counselors are going to visit all schools. We do that every year, and they'll start that scheduling process. Um, it will start for the middle schools this week, and then right after that they will visit all uh, private schools. and, and uh, as a reminder to parents, all eighth graders will get a hard copy of our educational opportunities book, but you also can access it now online on our on our LHS website. But that's that's an ongoing uh, process, and, and we include all students. And Wednesday night is welcome for any parent of a rising ninth grader. Absolutely, uh, eighth grade parent night is is open to any incoming ninth grader from any school. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments for Tom? All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. And I am going to just switch the agenda just a bit um, because we have another presentation or short presentation, I guess, an introduction to um, Mr. Andy Churchill, who is the director of the Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative. Um,
we had received information about member agreements for the LPVEC back in, I believe, one of our December packets. <laughs> So it's been a while, um, and we're going to have to vote on that this evening, but I know some of you haven't met or, or don't know Andy, so we thought this would be a great opportunity. So, Andy, welcome. Thank you. Um, yes, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the new Ann McKenzie. Um, <laughs> been on the job since July, so I can only um, claim that for so long. But um, prior to coming here, uh, I was... Uh, been working in education in the Pioneer Valley for quite a while. I was uh, ran a school to career partnership at the Collaborative in Northampton for uh, several years. I've been at the UMass Amherst Center for Education Policy for about 14 years. Uh, the last three of those, I was also the Readiness Center Director for the Pioneer Valley. And um, I was a member of the Amherst School Committee for six years and chair for four. So. Um, I am a recovering member of a school committee, <laughs> but I, I salute you and I understand where you're coming from. And uh, part of the reason that the, the that I'm excited about being um, part of the collaborative is that um, we exist to help you um, do things uh, collectively with other districts uh, more effectively and efficiently than you could do them um, on your own. Um, so the, our mission is to help school districts serve all their students more effectively, efficiently, and equitably. And um, as I, as you may know, the, the other districts that are, are members are um, Agawam, East Longmeadow, Hamden, Wilbraham, Ludlow, Southwick, Tolland, Granville, and West Springfield. So um, I'm here basically just to say hello. Um, it's a great opportunity to get out and, and meet all the school committees in, in our member districts. Uh, this is the seventh. It was scheduled to be the fifth, but <laughs> wet weather intervened. So um, here we are. So I just want to take the opportunity to just, you know, very quickly remind you what a, what a collaborative is about, what our collaborative does, and then talk to you about the, um, the collaborative the agreement, agreement, which is the basis on which we operate, and, and uh, it sort of codifies our partnership. So collaboratives have existed in Massachusetts since 1974. They came into uh, being originally to support districts in uh, meeting special education obligations with the new special education legislation that, that came about um, at, at that time. They've since expanded to support member districts in a, in a variety of ways. There are now 26 collaboratives in Massachusetts. Um, the other one in our region is the collaborative in Northampton, which serves <coughs> districts in, in um, uh, Hampshire and Franklin counties. Um, our, our collaborative um, has, do you have this handout, that, is this in your packet? I don't know, is this the one? Actually, I can give you this one, so you, I'm not just reading and you can just, it'll save us all time. So as that's coming around, basically um, we offer a, a variety of, of collaborative programs and services that the members um, have, have been uh, historically interested in. So we have a career tech program up on Brush Hill in West Springfield. It's unique in that it's a half day program so students can retain their membership in their home district. They can do sports. They can you know, do all the extracurricular things that that go with membership in a community, but they can spend half the day in, the state, in a state-of-the-art uh, technical facility where we have uh, 13 shops at the moment, and we are planning to implement a 14th um, next fall, which will be in precision, machine, pre precision machining manufacturing. Yes. Um, we also have special, uh, special education programs, um, and we provide those in a, in a variety of settings. Um, including one at, at in, in um, Glenbrook Middle School, um, and um, those are for uh, a variety uh, of uh, learning um, and developmental conditions. Excuse me. <coughs> we also have school uh, school busing, uh, school transportation. Sorry. <coughs> Um, do you have, is there some? I will go get one. Thank you. <laughs> I think I can carry on. 
I'll, um, we have school school transportation services, which uh, serve regular ed for five of our districts and special ed for six of our districts. We have uh, municipal me Medicaid reimbursement, so that um, we have somebody who has con who has sort of her own software that she's developed that, for whatever reason, she enjoys finding the uh, the money in the couch cushions that that otherwise would go unclaimed for Medicaid reimbursement. So she goes out and does the the work of identifying um, special education costs that are uh, federally uh, reimbursable um, and, and goes after them and secures uh, um, large amounts of, of funding for participating districts and municipalities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we also do have, have Paul who does energy, group energy purchasing and energy management, handles uh, natural gas and electricity for multiple municipalities and districts. Uh, we have job alike groups where individuals from our participating member districts um, superintendents, curriculum directors, uh, business managers, uh, special education directors get together on a regular basis to talk shop and exchange ideas and sometimes put together grant proposals. And then we have a variety of other curriculum assessment related services, uh, professional development, data analysis. Um, uh, we host the District and School Assistance Center, the DSAC, uh, from, the, from the Department of Ed. Um, recently, those folks who work part-time for the DSAC and part-time for the Collaborative did a data analysis project for, for your administrative team here. They were able to take the state data and, and, um, and analyze it and then present it to your administrators and, and, and staff in ways that were specifically tailored to your district. So that, that's sort of a, a quick um, summary of what we, the kinds of things we do, but we're always looking for other things that, that, that the members have an, a common interest in pursuing. One other thing we're waiting to hear on is some math professional development through the Mount Holyoke uh, Summer Math Program. We have a grant in that Longmeadow is a partner in that, and it will pay for teachers to do some, to do uh, advanced math professional development at Mount Holyoke in the summer if it comes through. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking to do and always looking for new opportunities to, to um, bring together for the member districts. Um, so the reason I'm here tonight is basically a bureaucratic technicality, which is always nice. Uh, but um, the there was one one collaborative um, in uh, in the northwest northeastern part of the state got in some financial trouble about uh, some number of years ago, and as a result, in 2012 the legislature passed uh, legislation that required all educational collaboratives to revise their agreements to make sure that it was clear how they operated. And um, so as a result, um, we have done that. The, the department uh, created a model uh, collaborative agreement. They also, um, we also had our, our existing agreement, which was from 19, 1988. And subsequently, with some minor amendments since then. And we also took a look at uh, an approved collaborative agreement um, from the Northampton Collaborative as we were pulling together what would be approved by the state. So what's listed here is the um, elements of a collaborative agreement um, and then the process is listed at the bottom. So first we had to go back and forth to the department multiple times until we had something that was agreeable to them and met the, met the, uh, the, the uh, uh, elements of the, of the statute according to their analysis. And we had to bring it to our board of, of directors, which includes one member from each of the member school committees. And now I've been going around to each of the member school committees to get the signature of their chair on the agreement. So once I have all seven, uh, we will have a finalized agreement, which is basically an excuse for me to come out and, and, and see all of you, which is nice. And, um, and I'll have this off my desk, which will also be nice. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, basically, we really did take the old agreement, put the parts of that in the sections of the, of the model agreement wherever it fit, and um, in the finance section, we basically took the, um, the Northampton Collaborative's already approved section, we took out CES, we put in LPVEC, we took out membership dues because we don't charge membership dues, and um, it is what it is. So we've been... Um, We've, uh, we, I've taken it to, let's see, I have five signatures so far. I've presented to six places, and um, I expect the sixth signature soon. Um, 
There have been a couple of questions that have been raised along the way about whether we, we want to tweak the language here or there, but some of those, some of those questions came up about after we already had four signatures um, from, from four school committees. So what I've been saying since then is if we agree together after we, after we submit this that there are further amendments or improvements that we want to make, I'm happy to come around again and get, get, get um, seven more signatures on, on, an amended ver on any amendments that you want to make. But the lawyers that have looked at it have said that this does um, pass muster in terms of the, um, the requirements of the collaborative agreement, and they're basically satisfied. Everybody has one or two things that they might suggest for further improvements, and I'm happy to discuss that if, if people want to. But basically what, what I'm here for is to um, say hi and to get a signature if I can. Go ahead. Uh, We'd like to welcome you, Andy, and a nice addition to the team. Uh, in terms of the agreement, we did run it by our lawyer. It's funny because one of our lawyers helped write it for you, so we had our other team of lawyers look at it. Um, the one thing that they brought up and that we also ran into the issue is budget time. The, the due date for your budget is pretty late, so we're wondering if you could bring it back to the team and ask about maybe a January 5th due date for the budget, because our budget rests on the development of yours, and we can't plug in our numbers. So right. that was, I think, the only thing that we had a question about in terms of the, the agreement. And that, this was my first time going through a budget, and I, I, we, we've discussed it a little bit already. Um, I'm happy to make that part of our process regardless. Good. And, um, you know, if we need an amendment to go into the agreement, we can, I can bring that around. But, um, you know, my goal next year would be to have it ready for you by the beginning of the year. Fantastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Did anyone else have questions or comments for Andy regarding the agreement or what they do or, or anything? All right. See so soon, right could now. I have a motion? Uh, I move. <laughs> I move that the school committee accept the Lower Pioneer Valley Education Collaborative member agreement dated September 2014. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? Is there any further discussion? Okay, so all those in favor? Okay. No, so unanimous, right? Yeah. Is that what you saw? Did your, did your motion have to allow you to sign it? Should they? Oh, uh, I'll make a subsequent motion. Okay. Uh, to amend the last motion, right? Because we just passed that. Uh, authorizing the chair to sign on behalf of the committee. Second. All right, so Sorry. motion and a second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, we're the board so Great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and, and thank you for the water. I'm <clears> getting over a cold, and it caught me at the, at the wrong time. It'll be frozen before you get home. <laughs> really? <laughs> frozen before it gets in the car. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Andy. We appreciate yeah. it. Would have been here sooner, but we've all been, it's been quite a winter. Hasn't it? All Somebody right. was asking if the cold was going to make anybody cancel tomorrow, and I'm like, no way. <laughs> no, exactly. no, I said we Joseph not. was asking. It would have earlier. Today, right. But, no. Yeah. Well, thank you, Andy. Thanks a lot. For people watching, there will be a full day of school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So correspondence. Quite a bit of correspondence. Um, an emailed letter from Ms. Pamela Mahoney dated February 2nd, 2015, regarding her thoughts on busing. An emailed letter from Ms. Rebecca Thompson dated February 10th, 2015, regarding transportation and the fiscal year 16 budget. An email letter from Ms. Amy Appel dated February 10th, 2015, regarding funding a full-time school adjustment counselor. An email letter from Ms. Caitlin Cronin dated February 10th, 2015, regarding transportation. An email letter from Ms. Kathy Reese dated February 10th, 2015, regarding transportation. And an email letter from Ms. Rebecca Powell dated February 11th, 2015, requesting more inf information regarding staffing reductions in the fiscal year 16 budget. Okay, thank you. Any comments from our visitors this evening? Okay. <laughs> 
All right, would you like to go on with your report? Sure. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that the Special mm -hmm. Programs Committee is going to have our first event in March. On March 10th, we are having Professor Larry Snyder from Bay Path talk about internet safety. A notice went out to the community today, so mark your calendars, March 10th, 7 o'clock at the high school. The second thing is that there is a letter in front of you that is addressed to the Longmeadow community. And I would like um, to send this out, and I plan on sending this out to the community tomorrow. It's about redistricting. Earlier this year, we had an enrollment uh, an enrollment group that looked at current trends, population predictions for the next several years. Currently, Blueberry School is overcrowded, so it's um, my intention to expand a committee into an elementary redist redistricting committee that will include the presidents of the elementary PTOs, a parent representative from every elementary school council, school committee representation, parent representatives from impacted areas, the elementary principals, teacher representatives, the assistant superintendent superintendent for learning, the director of pupil services, and myself. So we will put this letter out to the community to let them know it's coming. I've also, on the letter, put in dates so that people know uh, when the committees will be meeting. There will also be a public forum, and the public forum will be held on uh, Wednesday. Tuesday. I'm sorry, Tuesday. Uh, April 14th. Tuesday, April 14th, and then we'll follow up with a meeting after that so that the committee can assess what, what feedback we have from the community. The details are in the letter, so I just ask if there are any questions or clarification that you might like at this point. Well, Marie, <clears throat> do you mind? Feel free. Thank you. Uh, you know, obviously looking, having had a chance to review the letter, I would, um, and just go circle my yeah, we've yeah. made new ones. Okay, good. Um, I think it's, you know, I think obviously we should be very clear to the community right now before this process begins that the scope of the redistricting is not town-wide, but rather it is very limited to alleviate the population overcrowding at Blueberry Hill School. At the elementary schools, yeah. Right. And that it's more so included in the letter targeted at specific streets. So, you know, obviously this is going to be a long-term, or at least a longer conversation included over these, these dates, but uh, that, you know, at least from the beginning of this process, we want to be very clear, and we should be very clear, uh, that the majority of families um, will not be impacted by this. Mm -hmm. And that should just kind of be out there from the beginning because, you know, obviously I think that in, in the past when there have been wholesale changes to uh, where the lines are, uh, it's, you know, and rightly so, caused a lot of public interest. And so, you know, obviously I think we should quell as, as much fear as we can, uh, but it's very specific streets. And the letter will give you those streets. It's it's uh, approximately 65 students that would be moved from Blueberry School to Center School is my proposal. It is going to be up the, up to the committee to study this and make an make a recommendation back to me and school committee. Uh, the enrollment the enrollment committee looked and looked at data so that um, from that I've come forward with some recommendations. But I I think no few people should make such a major decision. We really need to hear from the community. This committee will be large so that we have representation, but Michael's right. The plan <coughs> is to move about 65 students from Blueberry to Center School and then from um, take the preschool and move it from Center School to Wolf Swamp, and that would help balance the enrollment. So, so it's yeah. not looking at middle schools, but the middle schools are not we talked about it with the administrative team, and we're not looking at middle schools right now because Williams Middle School, even though it has 100 more students, uh, it has an, a, an, a full team on the eighth grade that's handling some of that uh, overpopulation. And if we were to rebalance them right now, it would mean that we'd have to put in two-person teams at a couple of the middle schools, at both of them, and that's not advantageous for learning. So we're going to hold off um, one year, and that's the, that can be done in another phase. But right now, we don't think it's educationally wise to redistrict the middle school. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, just for, as Go a ahead, point John. of information, uh, how long has it been since we redistricted? What, 11, 12 years? 12 years, I think. Marie Pratt was telling me it was like when she first started 
to, uh, being it when she was. It, yeah, if memory serves. It goes back to the early 1990s. For 12 years. And, uh, no, no, it was 2002, 2003 school year. 2002, okay, excuse me. Um, it's, yeah, it's this, is, like it. this is a problem that has been growing and has been neglected mm -hmm. by previous committees, and I'm glad that we're finally getting around to biting the bullet on it. It's not a popular proposal. No. Nope. Uh, there's some people who are going to be very upset about it, but uh, yeah. it has to be done in the name of uh, fairness and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the public interest. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the question was raised <laughs> of when why were the overcrowding was the last time we redistricted? I believe that I've been told that the last redistricting took place when fifth grade moved from the middle schools back to the elementary school level. So, in, in the neighborhood we're looking at, the last one of the last redistricting center was overcrowded and students were shifted to Blueberry. And what's interesting now, it looks like the same neighborhood that used to be at center will probably go back to center. But again, we'll see what the committee says. But I do want the community to know that we, we understand people's commitment to their elementary schools and how much they love them. But all of our elementary schools are great. And if students do have to make a transition, we will do our best to make sure that there are transition plans, that there are dates set up for kids to visit school so that it'll be very smooth and uh, regardless of what school they're at they have great experience and just to just to be clear just so that we're not you know there's no questions between now and the first meeting date when you establish this we are proposing that students regardless of their grade move to a new school in the impacted neighborhoods um, I am suggesting that, but I think the committee's going to explore right. that. And what I did is I framed questions in this because we don't have consensus across the board on okay. whether or not, uh, I think we have consensus that fifth grade students should stay in the school, even if Blueberry students should not be transferred for their last year. We or, do not have consensus. Or that they have the option to stay. The option. We, the question's asked, do siblings stay or go? Um, it, the younger grades, at what grade do you say you have to move or you don't have to move? So those questions are going to go to the larger committee so they're in this letter framed so essentially um, we're just not ruling anything out we're not ruling anything out. I think I'd like to hear from the large committee to see what their opinions are, and I think we should weigh all the pros and cons and, and try and build consensus along the, uh, uh, among the larger group. I think the enrollment committee's done a great job of looking at the information, trying to articulate what neighborhoods would cause the least disruption and also where it would be easiest for um, kids to commute to a new school. So. Okay. Are you looking for a consensus on this? I think I'm informing you that I'm going to put the letter out. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> and wanted you to hear before it went out to the community. Okay. Yeah. Do you want us to um, do any feedback? Please. Okay. I'll send, I'm going to send it out tomorrow, so please do send feedback tonight. And Kim, I think in the letter there's a specific email address um, that we could direct people to that'll um, get to the appropriate people. And then, Diane, this letter, would that email be up on our website as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. No problem. So this letter will go up tomorrow. It will. For whoever's watching. Um, I can promise you it will be out by 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. Okay. <laughs> because I would put it out first thing in the morning, but if people are going to give me feedback, I, I think I'll give it the day to do that. So let's say by tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the evening. Okay? Okay. Could I ask school committee to get back to me by maybe noon, noon. tomorrow? Sure. And that way I can edit and get the final copy out? Yeah, I was just going to look at this because I know students made some recommendations that I Okay. <laughs> so if you get to me by noon, I can work on that. Because the other thing I'd like to do is now that we're talking about this, invite the players I mentioned on the committee, the PTO presidents need to know some school council reps, et cetera, that I put out the dates to them as well. So, so by noon tomorrow, if anybody has commentary, anybody from the school committee has commentary for Marie. Any of you at home, you have to wait. All right, you want and to continue? The, my presentation, you want that now or later, the mid-year review? Um, we can do it now. Why not? Okay. We'll just let you keep going. 
Yeah, the board, please. So generally, we ask um, we ask Marie to um, you know we do our goal setting uh, and present that at the beginning of the year, and then as as any good managing group, we don't like to wait till the very end to surprise anybody with an evaluation without having talked about it partway through. So um, Marie will be providing us a mid-year. Um, update regarding her goals and, and where she stands and, and how things have been moving along thus far. So, oh, I got it. It's the red button. There we go. And I'm going to move. Yeah, I do. And obviously, it's important to note that uh, it's part of a four part review process that I think principals and the superintendent go through every yes. year. Thanks to Desi. It's a, a, a format Desi says we follow. Is that on? Because I am not getting the. It's on now. There we go. Okay. Move <coughs> over one so that I'm not in the way. Do you have any extra copies of all that stuff? She doesn't have like, the stuff that is on top of the packet. We can share. But... <coughs> there should be another packet somewhere. There's the PowerPoint, but you need the report. Here's the report. I'm sorry. Thank yes. You. No, I have that. Thank you. It's been a very busy year, but we're excited to report halfway through what's happening in the uh, district. In front of you, you have a report, and if you notice, it's two colors. The mid-year report has in black what I proposed in the beginning of the year that you approved for my goals, and the red is um, the comments that I've added to give you an update on where we're at. Just as a reminder, DESI comes out with a has come out with a model that all superintendents to follow, and they give us three target areas: professional practice, student learning, and district improvement. So when you take a look at how my goals are set up, I've highlighted those three areas: professional practice, student learning, and district improvement. For the benefit of our listeners, DESC means Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So first, professional practice goal A was to improve the effectiveness of classroom observations with the administrative team. I think everyone's aware that we walk through the schools frequently. We um, go through uh, and we visit classrooms, but we also target areas when we do those walkthroughs. So if you look attached to your packet, one of the goals was to improve the effectiveness. And we've done that by creating what's called a walkthrough checklist. And this walkthrough checklist was passed out in September. It's just been refined so that we've added more things to it so that when we walk through classrooms, we can observe what's happening. We can discuss um, what's going on. When we walk through a classroom, we're targeting usually literacy or math. We might be looking at what's going on in the specials that day. We've looked at the wind block, et cetera. So what are the milestones in this area? We've developed and implemented an assessment tool for classroom observations. We've scheduled visits to all schools and with um, appropriate administrators. For example, all the elementary principals come on a walkthrough at a given elementary school. And we have identified targeted purposes for our visits. The second goal is student learning. And there were four categories under this. In September, I identified that we would increase student achievement. We would develop school plans to raise student achievement that we would create homework uh, expectations for the district, and then D, explore online learning opportunities for students um, at, the high, at high schools. So 
you have, first I'll start with C, you have again in your packet a draft of the homework expectations. This is an ongoing document. Uh, it started last summer where I drafted and brought it to the administrative team and asked them to go back to the faculty to discuss it. It had come to my attention from various parents that expectations were different at different schools, and not only different schools, you could be at the, in the fifth grade at one school and have one teacher giving 10 minutes of homework and another giving two hours. So I drafted this, we worked at the administrative team this summer during our retreat, and then they brought it back to the, back to the faculty. It's now been back to the faculty, um, I think three times. We discussed it in September, they had another meeting, and I sent out an email asking for feedback. I got a lot of feedback, so while we hope to have this in place by October, it's still a, a working document until I feel like the staff's in a good place with it and the administration's in a good place. I think it's important to take time so that everybody feels ownership of this, but we're well on our way. So this is the most um, recent draft of, of the document based on the feedback I've had from everyone. We also are working on implementing Inform. It's a data management system. All the critical information has been loaded down. That's MCAS data, Ames Web data, BAS, etc. This means that a principal or a teacher can look up a student and have all the data in one place. This is really instrumental because if you get the MCAS scores back and you're worried about a young person, you can look to see is our internal assessment also showing this struggling or was this an anomaly in a bad testing day. We've also been able to download individual status around special education if they're on 504, if they're an English language learner, etc. And we've also trained the administrative team on how to use it. As Andy said, we had some data specialists from the collaborative come over. We met with them to talk about the templates that we wanted so that we could um, look at data quickly within the district. We used some of those templates to uh, match up with what we were getting from the MCAS as well as Inform. We provided training to introduce this product in July. We had people come back in September and October to work with us as well. So we brought on the experts. We also have assessed Ames Web Bass Act SAT data. We've looked at that as a team to see how our students are doing and how we can increase achievement. Another area that we've done at DDMs, the district determined measures. This was a area that the state mandated last year that all grade levels have um, have all MCAS grade, I'm sorry, all grade levels need to have the district determined measures. If the grade level takes the MCAS, then the MCAS is one of the things that they absolutely have to use. So our elementary schools are using Ames Web and MCAS. Their high school has developed some of their own data measures as well. Um, the middle schools as well in certain areas have developed their own and some are using the MCAS and Ames Web as well. So that's been done on a grade by grade, subject by subject basis. The wind block has been implemented. I think we're finding great successes in closing the achievement gap for our kids that struggle. We're still working on developing challenge curriculum. That's an area that we've highlighted for summer curriculum money to make sure that we're writing curriculum so that all kids are um, having their needs met. Goal B was to develop school plans to raise student achievement. The snow has really hindered our work in this area. All the principals have done their school improvement plans and are ready to bring them to you. Originally, we thought we'd do those early in the year, but the school councils were all at different places with the school improvement plans, so the principals asked and you agreed that they could come in January to present. They're ready to present. We just need some good weather and a you know, sustained basis, and you'll, you'll have those presented to you. The homework expectations we just discussed. And then goal D, to explore online learning opportunities for high school students. Tom uh, Landers has done a phenomenal job in this area. We take a look at, we've increased the amount of equipment at the high school so that students during ice blocks, that's um, areas where they do independent study, can sign a, a piece of equipment out if they don't have their own computer or technology device with them. We also um, are now a BYOD. Students can bring their own device to the high school. That's new this year. We've also talked with vendors about what programs can we bring on? Uh, Kathy, president of the LEA, is here, and I met with a representation from the MTA to develop a one-year plan for online learning agreement, and it's working very well. We've had our first class Mandarin in place, and we've agreed that the online learning opportunities can be those that are not currently offered in the high school or in a, a unique case where we um, have special needs for a student that we can meet through online learning. 
So we'll take a look at that. We'll continue work and we'll discuss what courses might be added. For example, we've often had a few students that can go through our entire math program, so that'd be a nice opportunity to hook up with the college. For Mandarin, we've hooked up with Middlebury College, which is renowned throughout the country for their world language program. So we're looking at opportunities like that to find some really high level courses in science, math, et cetera, for our students that we don't currently offer here. The third area is district improvement. Goal A is to begin the process for securing a new middle school. B, develop new curriculum goals for technology. And C, increase communication throughout the district and community. Janet and I met last week. We had a conference call with a representative at the MSBA to talk about the SOI. Uh, we are moving forward. I, Tom's been going to be working with Chris Reed to take a look at updating uh, some, of the, some of the mechanical questions that we have around filling out the SOI. The bad news is they funded eight out of um, 100 and projects last year, so the money continues to decrease. The competition is really stiff right now, but we will fill out the SOI. We will do our best to see what we can do to put ourselves in a good light, but the, the amount of funding is very limited right now. We, the deadline is in April, so we're beginning that work now. We're in good stead to make that. We have also developed a calendar where we work backwards because part of the SOI process is to get it through school committee, then it has to go through the select board, and it has to make the April deadline. So that we'll be working on that pretty intensely over the next month. And Marie, last year they said that 15 out of 108 projects were funded. And back in 2012, she knew off the top of her head that 16 out of 280 projects were funded. So it's, and you don't know the competition that you're up against until that deadline when all of the project submissions are turned in. Mm -hmm. what, what is interesting to know is that downward pattern, it's less and less schools that fund them. So that's not good news. Uh, goal B is to develop new curriculum goals for technology. Sue's done a great job of bringing together our tech people. They've taken a look at the park test to see what expectations are. Uh, they definitely agree that we have higher expectations for our students in earlier grades, so they're, re they're reworking that curriculum right now. There's a calendar developed. There are um, agendas for meetings. They're writing curriculum right now as we speak, so we're ahead of the game, and they'll be presenting that hopefully by the end of the year to staff, students, and, um, and others. Goal C was to increase communication throughout the district and community. We've done several things in this area. Uh, first of all, we're, we sent out the newsletter in October and hopefully we'll get one out soon. We also have set up a calendar where we have articles going to the Longmeadow News every week. I set up a calendar and administrators are sending at least three articles. Diane's overseeing that to make sure that we're getting them in. I think the Longmeadow News is giving us more press, which is good news, and we're um, trying to increase a week awareness of all the great work that's happening. We also have focused on more outreach to the community. We had a presentation on Common Core and Park earlier this year, uh, as well as uh, as we sent out a flyer on how to have a good conference. We talked about offering that as a workshop for parents, but the principals felt like there was nothing more they could add beyond the, um, the flyer. So they're going to try and um, highlight something later in the year. We have a committee organized to expand, expand parent training programs and to look at mental health issues of kids. That's called the Special Programs Committee. As you know, the technology is the first piece that we've done right now the, that will be March 10th. In addition, we've surveyed all the, we've surveyed parents. We had over 300 responses. We also surveyed our students in grades four, five, all the way through grade 12, and we got very helpful information on that. So the committee is refining that information. We've, we've broken it down. We've met with the administrative team to get their input, and we're looking to see how we can take that information and develop a three-year plan for bringing programs to the community. Uh, additional work, we have the budget is now completed. We've worked closely with the town. Tom's done a great job of presenting that. The technology updates, Kevin has put in new computer labs in the middle school that were just completed last week. He's also completed new servers in the town. That's been an ongoing project on the town side. We're delighted with the amount of technology and we'll continue to work on that. One of the goals for this year is actually to have conversations about making a BYOD, which is bring your own device to the middle schools because we 
think we're ready now that we can empower our students at that grade uh, at, at that level as well. We now are doing two years worth of calendars. The high school actually were the catalyst for that conversation because they're having problems getting Symphony Hall on good nights. And if we can do a two year calendar, then they can book ahead. It's worked well because it gives us a better sense of what the district's doing. We have aligned some of our staff development to dates that other districts are using t as well so that we can share some staff developers and um, save expenses. So that's an ex exciting initiative happening next year as well. The enrollment study, now you, you've heard just about uh, the redistricting, so all that is happening as well. So it has been an exciting year. It's been a very productive year. I think when we take a look at our growth in the areas of technology, when we take a look at the wind block and the success of that and some of the other initiatives underway, we're um, in good stead right now. So I'll open it up for questions at this point. As well, you've been busy, and you haven't even included everything that was that was on there. And I must say, I do like the graphics. It's a reminder of what grass really looks like. <laughs> so um, it's probably why I gravitated for, for the next three months. I'm betting the last snow bank melts by the last day of school. That, that's my bet. So, any uh, questions for Marie or or comments about her goals versus where she is this year? Well, please feel free. Sure. Uh, you know, obviously coming from last year when we had a lot and they were very like A or B, you know, sort of situation, you know, you could either, either did or you didn't. I think that the way that we establish what your goals would be this year is much more conducive to a, you know, kind of thoughtful evaluation in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only other thing I would say is that uh, looking through the list of all the things that you've completed so far uh, is very uh, impressive, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously some of these things are going to continue to be ongoing, but we've gotten, you know, one of the things that I know we'd mentioned in your, in either the goal setting session or your review is we love updates more frequently. Well, tonight we got an update on enrollment study. Uh, shortly we're going to have an update on the calendars. Uh, you update us on technology. Um, so, you know, I think the list of things that you've set for yourself this year have been completed in a lot, you know, very, very, and not only a long way. what was set initially, but the things that have gotten added in throughout the year, the enrollment studies, the transportation, the, um, we're in a negotiations year, budget, and all of those things that, and special programs for something new this year that wasn't on the initial um, goal setting. So there have been a lot of things added that are being worked on that you highlighted in addition to what was just set. And Michael, to your point of that, the, the new evaluation system, um, last year after evaluation, we looked at adopting the DESE um, suggested model for you know setting goals and evaluating. So that's when we worked on goal setting, we kind of followed the framework of that, of setting specific <coughs> goals, but then also being able to evaluate you know, day-to-day -day operations without having to put that in there. So, I and not think, having 99 indicators. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which I think it's more manageable. Yeah. Exactly. Kim, did you have something? Well, I was I was actually looking for more information on the SOI because I know that just off, through offline conversations, there was a committee that was formed, but I don't know about any of the research that was done about the decision as to what's going to be pushed and asked for. It's being worked on. Um, and, the, and with the April deadline, feels like we're going to be really rushed. <laughs> the committee does have a lot of work to do. Um, but budget was definitely yeah. a priority. Um, negotiations is definitely a priority. The, the nice thing is that we do have um, SOIs that were filed at the same time that the high school SOI was filed. So a lot of that data 
um, they don't ask for a whole lot of new data. It's yeah. historical data. When when were roofs last replaced? When were repairs last done? When were the boilers last so, replaced? So a lot of it can be reused. So it's a matter of kind of tweaking and, and reworking some of it. So there was some research that was done that we're going to see that shows that it's why we want to do one middle school versus repairing the two middle schools and all that? We will. Once a lot of the work we've been doing, for example, the enrollment study and getting projections on enrollment, that's all part of this. So we have a lot of pieces. It's a matter of me putting it together right now so you can see it. Okay. It's You have to always update what repairs you've done to the building. You have to prove you've taken care of it as well. We have a lot of that in place. So we've tried to divide the work so that we can get this together pretty quickly and report back. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the statement of interest process is, is less of an you know, opportunity to push for a specific agenda and more of an opportunity to articulate our general needs. Uh, when the MSBA decides whether they're going to move forward with a building project or whatever, they'll invite us to, to conduct a feasibility study. Uh, the town has to pay for that and approve it, uh, like they did with the high school. And you know, ultimately, that's, that's the opportunity for feasibility to, for a consolidated middle school to be an outcome of feasibility. Um, which will most likely be the outcome given the enrollment decline. Um. And, and that's well said because the MSBA will be the ones who will actually tell us whether or not they'll fund one, the, the idea of consolidation of the people who are watching. I would like to ask to explore the option of having one middle school, to build one new one and combine them and free up one of the spaces. I think to have a middle school of about six to 700 is ideal. You can have more opportunities for kids. You can have more electives. There's more flexibility in the schedule. It's more cost efficient to do that. But the, the MSBA is requiring that we do an SOI in each of the schools right now, that we can't just go in with one plan. We have to proceed the way it was. And then, as Michael said, that feasibility study will look at everything. They'll look at sites, they'll look at costs, and they'll, there'll be um, studies of the building the way they are now. So if we're chosen to move ahead, there's a lot of work that goes into the next phase. This is just the initial let them know how bad the building is, and they'll consider whether it'll take us or not. So did we put a SOI in for both? Yep, we have to write them right. for we both. We have to them. do both. Oh, and it's not done yet. And who's on the committee? Because I didn't even know we had. That's the middle school that. working group. Okay. That's Katie, John, Joseph's the student representative, and me okay. with Marie. Um, and I think you know we need to very clearly articulate um, to the community at large that, like Marie said, our filing an SOI is just a first step and may not even take us anywhere um, after the application out of you know like with the numbers that they had given us when they're telling us that 108 applicants last year and and only 12 were funded I think um, you know 108 applicants 15 were funded it's, you know, and the representative from MSBA said, you know, one of those being funded was because students were being evacuated from the building because of, you know, overcrowding and conditions that would not even support learning. So, and they fund like half. What do they pay? They do it based on the socioeconomics of the town. For the high school, we got just under fifty percent. So I'd assume we'd come in at the same ratio. So, you know, it, it's not to to panic anyone saying, oh, my God, they're starting to build a new middle school next year. It's this is the first of a very long process, a very um, time consuming and uh, fact finding process that we just feel that it's, you know, due diligence with the conditions of both of our middle schools that we need to at least start. Well, and I think it's important to just kind of keep in mind that it's not a secret to anybody that right. the condition of our middle schools warrants review and warrants uh, us to, you know, to approach the state for help and looking towards what the future of those buildings is going to be like. And quite honestly, anything that we need to do or want to do with these buildings you know, really kind of falls back and gets hinged, you know, kind of caught up in, well, what are you going to do with the middle schools? Like, that's a conversation that we have with capital every year. Right. So, you know, it's important for us to be able to kind of make a decision about what's, wh where are we spending good money after bad? 
and you know where can we be putting town resources to better use and quite honestly it seems like every department is articulating its needs these days and so I you know we should be we should be there with them and that's not to say that we should have a new middle school tomorrow but it is to say that we should get the ball rolling absolutely so do we want to pick a date for the working group um, I think what I can do next week is outline, and we've broken down some of that, but it would be good to get the working group together to just talk about what we're going to do and where we're headed. Did you want to talk about dates now, or do you want to wait until offline and, and the group can meet to set a meeting date? Yeah, them? if everyone just stays afterwards, it would probably be good to do that now so we can get it posted. Perfect. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments from Marie regarding her mid year? Presentation. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you need to be. Well, thank you very much for that. It, sometimes it's hard to think of all the things, the, the good things that we get done and, and are being accomplished when we get bogged down in day to day. So it was nice to see how much we, here. we've gotten done. Thank you. All righty. Joseph, do you have any report for us? Oh, of course you do. Nothing really big, but uh, first I'd like to congratulate our swimming t our swim and dive team. Um, girls swim and dive, Western Mass second place. State fourth place. And uh, boys, Western Mass first place, state's ninth place. So some really impressive um, championships there. Upcoming, we have playoffs starting this week. So um, we, uh, as Mr. Landers mentioned, we have eighth grade parent night on Wednesday. We also have boys varsity basketball, seven o'clock. Um, boys Varsity Hockey, Thursday, 6 o'clock uh, at Olympia Ice Ho Center. And Girls Varsity Basketball, Friday at 7 o'clock at the high school. Um, that covers the playoffs that are starting this week. Uh, the school committee, student advisory council, we're, uh, we're hoping to meet with you guys at, our, uh, at the March 23rd meeting to discuss um, the things that we were going to discuss at our last meeting that canceled because of snow. Uh, we're still working on some surveys. We're still working on um, electronic report cards. We're still working on uh, after school or uh, snacks with uh, Whitsons. And uh, we're still working on our website explaining student government at LHS. Um, we uh, last year we talked about um, step up day, and that was one of the things that we suggested. Right. Um, as Mr. Landers reported, it did happen today. Um, the other great thing, and I've reported on this in the past, is uh, Miss Godin, who runs our website, the high school, did a great job taking the educational opportunities booklet and turning it into like a website instead of just like down, uh, scanning the pages in. So that combined with step up day and the things we've always had, which are eighth grade parent night, obviously orientation, uh, I think are all great steps in the right direction. So those are all the things we're working on, and hopefully we'll be able to have our meeting. I don't unless we'll have another snow day next at the end of the year. <laughs> no more snow days. At the end of it's uh, got to have to be real deep, <laughs> <laughs> real deep snow. Yes. Um, so yeah, good luck to all our teams, and also um, I'm trying to get the link up on the high school's website. But the the lacrosse team, the boys lacrosse team, was selected for some kind of competition. Basically, um, I sent you all an email with the link, and it hopefully will be on the high school's website where the community can go online and we can vote. It's like a poll, and if we win, we advance to the next round, and if we win that, uh, the whole lacrosse team gets sponsored uh, new equipment, new head oh, that's for free. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. uh, Long Meadow Biz also has that on their Facebook page Perfect. right now. So, so do I. <laughs> so I put it on mine as well. So. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I think we, as I last checked, we were trailing by something small, like 100 votes. So uh, yeah. if we win, that'd be pretty cool. Um, that would be. New helmets for the costume is awesome. And you said they're sponsored? Um, I didn't really look into it that much. I don't know. Um, I, I think it's some kind of like sponsorship. I, was, uh, I don't think they're just giving away helmets for free. But um, okay. warrior, warrior Regulator 2? Yes. That's good. I don't want to be a wet blanket on this, but we might have to talk about that if they win. Well, if they win, then we'll have that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, we might have to amend a policy is all. <laughs> Didn't look into how it works, but I uh, I hope we can have that discussion. So we be getting them. Yeah, right now we're uh, behind. <laughs> Everybody go and vote. <laughs> Everyone go vote. Yep, uh, that's uh, everything that we're working on. Um, <clears throat> and if, of course, if any students or community members or committee members have any um, questions or things they'd like me to work on, I email on the website. All right, anything for Joseph? They covered it all. 
don't know. We need to give him some work to do or something. Yeah. Oh, I've been doing it for my sporting game. He has these snow days with nothing to do. <laughs> no, full day of school tomorrow. That's right. Unfortunately. That's right. That's right. Doesn't matter how cold it is. All right. Thank you, Joseph. Okay. Um, finance stuff? Tom, did you want to? Um, last time we met, which was January 29th, that meeting was dedicated completely to the FY16 budget. budget which has now been presented and approved. So we are meeting again. We meet next on uh, this coming Thursday uh, for some regular business items. And our budget has been presented to the Town's Finance Committee and to the Select Board's Finance Subcommittee. So I believe that everybody has been well informed. All right. Um, John, are there any legislative updates that you know of? Nope, uh, nothing to report. All right, Liz, anything about Green? No. Michelle, operations? I got a few. Seal? Well, I'll give it to you if you want. That's fine. You can keep it. I'll stop it. All right, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, policy sub, I know you met this evening. Yes, we met this evening. Um, for inclusion in the next packet, we did approve for recommend, or we did recommend uh, policy section JII, which is a revision of the students' complaints and grievances uh, policy. We also approved some minutes. Um, we also at our last meeting, and I'm not sure, I can't, I can't remember because we've had so many meetings um, this month, uh, but we have we approved several policies for uh, rec we for first review for first reading, uh, which I don't know if I ever told. Okay, I'll give you the minutes that we approved tonight, so you can include them in the next packet. Mm -hmm. um, but several of them, including, um, we did uh, policy section JH, which is student absences and excuses. Um, we made amendments to that uh, for the next meeting. We tabled policy section ADF, which is student wellness, um, in, re in light of the current wellness policy, uh, total wellness review um, and health program review. We also table policy section EAEC, or also known as JICC, uh, student conduct on school buses, as well as EEAE, uh, which was walkers and riders, so those are coming down the pipe, but for the packet the next time, we will have policy section JCCD, which is domestic violence leave policy, which speaks to the conditions under which, uh, should that be necessary, we would hope it is never necessary, um, that that would take place. So we'll have three for first review next time, JIII, yeah. JH, and JCCD? Yeah, I think those are all the right letters. <laughs> Okay. So. Enrollment review. Marie has updated everybody with the letter regarding what's happening with that. Um, transportation review. We did meet today um, to start discussing emailed comments along with forum comments from, from community members and to start formulating um, a recommendation that will be brought to the entire school committee. We're, you know, working on it. it it's, you know, a lot of different moving pieces in it, so it will probably, our goal is to have it by the, I can't remember the date, by the end a of? April 27th meeting. By the April 27th meeting is to have a recommendation to school committee for vote. So, are there any other the committees that I've missed? On, trans if I could, on transportation, uh, have we surveyed uh, parents to ascertain whether they know what their options are with respect to bus transportation? Um, have we ever done anything like that? To, because uh, from what I'm hearing from some folks is that most people are not aware that uh, bus transportation is available for a fairly reasonable fee. Um, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, at all? I mean, we, we haven't done any surveys of parents regarding transportation. The route's uh, been on our website uh, forever and information regarding 
uh, eligibility is also there, the fee. And uh, if they live more than two miles and they're above grade six, then, you know, it also talks about how uh, that they could get transportation provided they go to an existing route. Uh, some of the reason why this topic came up was to look at efficiencies and um, maybe service areas we currently don't have it. So, you know, we're taking in feedback from people, but the information has been on our website uh, every year about routes and any changes and the fee and so on. Um, so for people to say they weren't aware of it, it's been available. And so, um, but we haven't done any kind of survey. Okay. All right. Thank you. Michelle? Uh, yeah, I just had a question since we got a lot of emails on transportation. Did we respond to them? You know, how is that being handled? Did we, um, I saw some of them that we have in correspondence had responses, you know, that you could see, but otherwise <coughs> somebody taking care of that. I believe Diane Beaver. I responded to all of them, letting them know that we forwarded their emails on to the transportation. Okay. So they yeah. acknowledged that they were received. Okay. They've so all gotten that acknowledgement. In terms of people that have questions or that, you know, are we going to respond? I don't know that we had made any plans to answer their questions specifically. Um, the, the open email was to let us know their concerns, questions, or, or any feedback that they had. So that would all be taken under advisement of the committee. I don't know that we were going to go back and answer each one specifically. I guess that would be a discussion that the committee could have at, at its next meeting of if we want to go back and personally answer each one. Okay. I just didn't know if we had sure somebody was taking care of them. Right. At least, to my knowledge, at least they've all been acknowledged that they were received and forwarded. So it wasn't just hanging out there that, you know, oh, I sent it an email and, and nobody did anything with it. Kim, did you have something? Well, I just, because we kind of missed the school committee comments. comments. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Part. So one of my questions is with correspondence, because there was some correspondence that I saw in here that I saw in our packets for the first time, and I hadn't, so when it goes to just our generals, the general school committee email, does it not go to all of us? So what happened with the transportation ones was I was asked to send those on directly to transportation subcommittee, which I did. And then I included them in your packets tonight because they are addressed to school committee. Right. So you're getting them so that you're all aware that they were received and they're recorded as official correspondence. So when stuff gets sent to the general school committee email, we don't see it until we're getting our packets for the Most meeting. Most of it you do. This was very specific to transportation. So I found um, just to the transportation study. Okay. Yes. You, you could have all of those forwarded if you'd like. That's easy enough to do if you'd like to receive all correspondence to school committee. I just feel like, yeah, I mean, we sh I feel like we should be getting, if it's coming to school committee, to the general to email the general address. email, they're thinking that it, we're all getting it. And then if someone approaches you out and about, mm -hmm. oh, did you see my email? Well, no, my meeting's not for another week. <laughs> so I haven't seen your email yet. So why aren't we it's, doing that? Just as they come in forward to everybody. I don't know. I mean, does that yep. does that make sense? Sure, because if you run into some, they'll wonder why you didn't read it. Yeah, yep. I would. I don't want to feel nope. like I'm not. I was already getting them, so if you get them too, that's fine. <laughs> See, I don't get them, so. <laughs> And then my, I guess my other question was on some of these, we had like with the budget thing that we had to approve, not on air and all that. Right. And we had asked people for some feedback and they clearly did send us their feedback. Were we going to, I don't know, have at least a discussion about some of the things that they had talked about, like with, um, like Amy had mentioned something about the, and I know that you've got a plan in place for the school psychologist, but I just, she might not know. I don't know I yeah, just, there were some budget questions. There were some budget questions, and I'm wondering if we should address them on air so everybody right, knows, in the or. Open. Marie, if you want to. The emails that we've received that have specific. I mean, I, there weren't a ton, there were just a few. Yeah, questions. And yeah, I know yeah. I've been responding to people that will share that as soon as we know. But okay. uh, some of that is based upon whether or not we redistrict. 
okay. and in projecting if we are able to successfully redistrict, we should be able to um, save, reduce the number of classroom teachers we have. We will not be firing people. We will be doing that through attrition in that we still will have um, very, very good class size by doing that. So, But I can't say that for now because I don't know the results of the redistricting committee. Okay. And then the other one, I think, in Amy's letter was the about adjustment the adjustment counselors. counselors. Mm -hmm. At this time, I don't know if you wanted to talk about that at all. Yeah, it, it, the, uh, at this time, we we are looking at internal ways to offer more support to kids, but I have a lot of work to do internally with different groups, so I don't have information for you tonight, but I am continuing to pursue options. And people should know that that is something that we've got on the top of our yep. minds, I guess, was right. we go it, through it's this. It's not been forgotten. It's not, the, the, it's not been forgotten. Because the, the things that I got questions on were adjustment counselors, um, and I know that that's not, I guess we should make it clear that it hasn't left our minds until next budget season. <laughs> no, 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 no. And since I did forget school committee comments before, thank you for, sorry. No, 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 I, I'm just whipping along here. Were there any other school committee comments, um, you know, to be made or any, anything anybody wanted to? I'll make a general announcement, but I'll pull up on my email. Okay. I'm not going to sing and dance until you, yeah, you know, do that. Okay, well, I guess, Mike, I do have a question. Okay. Um, Good, going, then I don't have to sing and dance and torture people. No dancing while he's pulling his thing up. Um, I don't know if there's a way that next year we can make the budget process. I know you asked him when he was here earlier for his numbers earlier. It felt very rushed this year. I got it. We got the presentation on Wednesday, and we had to approve it on Monday. It didn't leave a whole lot of time for review questions or, honestly, review of that type of a budget um, for someone that's not on the Finance Committee, and where there's only three members out of the seven not on the Finance Committee, and the Finance Committee meetings weren't really posted from the last month finance for me minutes. to review. <laughs> no. Finance sub minute minutes. Oh, sorry. Okay. The, the, I mean, the I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. I misspoke. The meeting minutes, minutes weren't posted for us to review so that we could see the conversations that had gone on. Gotcha. To know the history. Like, I really tried to, like, do a little bit of research in those few days that I had, and I couldn't go on that. And then the, our public forum from the year before was... <laughs> was missed unfortunately so like I didn't have a whole lot to go back to and go back and look at and Tom, so do you want to address some of the some of your part of it in terms of, of the timing sue you can't comment <laughs> yeah I mean well normally we do it a week before we did back it up this year from Monday to Wednesday in the past it's given the committee a full week I saw that from last year so, uh, I went and looked historically <laughs> that has been the time frame would be a week prior to the public hearing there'd be a formal presentation to the committee um, based on everything that has been added or changed in the budget um, to allow more time would back up the whole process meaning we'd have to have it done sooner um, we most certainly could look at that. I don't recall why we moved it from the Monday meeting to Wednesday this year. The weather um, had backed us up. I was going to say weather backed us up at the in the final stages mm -hmm. and with some meetings um, with with other entities um, before being able to for you to finalize your numbers. I think that was a, a factor this year, which. You know, yeah, I mean, and as Marie mentioned, the collaborative piece this year definitely played a role in not finalizing the numbers, which can have a domino effect on everything else we're trying to include in the budget, depending upon changes in their programs and costs associated with those. So um, it's a balancing act, trying to get it done and meet the timelines for both advertising our public hearing and having those figures set, um, or at least somewhat set, so that it's a a reflection of what's going to be presented to school committee and that has to be turned in uh, it's like a week and a half prior to the public hearing date um, so it's it's a challenge if next year during you know before we start the process we want to try so to back it up and put some dates and stones that. so that we well, could have the full week the other thing would be that we, would, we could provide feedback to the select board on the date that they require our budget and we can ask them to push it back a week 
Yeah, I mean, historically, the calendar at the select board level has been built based on town meeting back to right. uh, right. back printing to of the board, days. back to finance mm -hmm. committee receiving it. And I do know that it, so. you know when we had the issue with the the snow and the public forum and everything. Um, unfortunately, budget happens right around our winter break, and they said, "Well, yeah, the select board had agreed. Well, we can, we don't need it by Friday. We can wait until Tuesday." Well, with Monday as the holiday and that whole week as break, you know, while it was very gracious of them to be willing to back it up for us, it doesn't help when we have families who travel. Um, and the Monday was, in essence, a, a lost day because of the holidays. So, but I definitely hear what you're saying, and maybe we look at it as let's try to back it up so that we can give members a full week to review um, the information. Well, and on top of that, I think it would have been helpful to have it before we were presented. You know, like I couldn't process that you know, all that information and have <coughs> questions for the administration team that was here. So like if we had it ahead of time before it was presented to us and we could look through it so that we were prepared with questions when they were here because I had to go home and really come up with my questions and I could ask Marie, but I couldn't ask some of the admin team that was here because I got it. That would be... Well, the process in the past would be we present it, then school committee has their hearing, and then have questions so they've had a full week to review it. Admin team usually comes to the public hearing yeah. to the public forum. and to answer okay. any question forum. school committee would have. They were not there this year because of the weather. Right. Um, only um, the so director of services. They were They, were they normally to come to both the okay. presentation to the school committee and then the night of the public forum okay. and to when answer school questions. committee uh, might have any questions. Okay. So we'll just um, make sure that next year when we're looking at setting dates and meeting dates that we, you know, barring, you know. And maybe some updates for those of us that aren't on the budget committee of things that are big that will be, you know, I think. Have, have when we you're not been presenting that during the finance subcommittee reports? Not in detail, just that. Right. I mean, a lot of things on. were surprised to me. I had never heard anything about them, so I just, you know. Okay. Basically, and, and I got the budget at the same time the public got the budget. And if I'm supposed to be asking questions and whatnot during that session, it's not really. Well, I don't think that's our session to ask questions. That's when it's okay. first presented but it was this time to everyone. Presence. And then it would be Good. questions of both the yeah. public and the committee are the following open week. forum night. Okay. That's your memory of it, right? Historically, yeah. I mean, historically, the we get the presentation, and you know, it's uh, unfortunately like you know, for people like John and I, like we kind of know exactly where to look in the book to be able to ask the questions right away. But usually, that following week when we have that hearing, that's when we normally would do it, and then we have a second meeting that week scheduled in case we decide we don't like things in there or we get feedback from the public that might change our mind about it. Obviously, that didn't happen this year. Right. So I think this year, you know, was an anomaly. Um, unfortunately, the weather playing a, a big factor in in the whole budget process, not mm -hmm. just the presentation and the hearing, but you know, in you getting information and, and other meetings that you have prior to, you know, with developing the budget. So hopefully, the weather will be more cooperative next year. But I think definitely of making sure that when we're looking. You know, when we're given the directive in October, Tom, um, of maybe really setting dates <coughs> then and not wavering from them would be more helpful. It's weather dependent. Yeah, I can't, we can't control the weather, but at least I think what we had done was by moving it back to the Wednesday um, instead of having it on the Monday was to give Tom time to, to finish up and work out all the details, along with the admin team who put a lot of time and effort into that booklet. And I do take some responsibility for that time-consuming process because I did push for that last year. But uh, sure you do get a lot of compliments on it, Tom. So Thank you. It's a team effort. A lot of people contribute to that. You all, I mean, you all get a lot of compliments from mm -hmm. other board members. Finance Committee loved it. Yes. Finance Committee said that, you know, they're very impressed with what we do and that 
they're, they're still working on trying to develop their budget presentation to those same guidelines. The so town's finance committee. They didn't the remember that we, uh, you know, they forced us to do it. The but. town's finance committee is taking two years to accomplish what Tom and the whole admin team got together last year and then reproduced for this year. So they were very impressed with our, our packet and the blood, sweat, and tears that went into it, so. <laughs> but that, thank you for bringing Just, that, you know. Okay. No, it, don't be sorry. It's, you know, I, I totally understand where you're coming from and, and sometimes being, um, you know, in the forest and can't see the trees, so it's, it's good to be reminded. Any other school committee comments? Michael, did you get your email? Out? Did you get your? Yes, I did. Well, actually, no, because it wasn't an email. It was a Facebook invitation, so I had to go on Facebook for it. But Saturday, March 28th at 6 o'clock, the Wolf Swamp Elementary School uh, PTO will be having their annual fundraiser. This year, it is not Dinner with the Stars, much to all of our disappointment, but it actually sounds pretty cool. It is a blues and barbecue uh, event at Twin Hills Country Club. Tickets are $50 uh, and can be purchased, I think, at wolfswamp.org. Um, so you have a chance of winning an iPad, too. But more importantly, uh, you know, I think we all come out for all the elementary schools when we can. So I would encourage everybody to go um, this time as well. Um, one of my very best friends is the saxophone player that night, and he is awesome. Yeah. So you should all come out and see him. And in case it's you wanted to know, uh, featured music will be by Blueshead and Mark Norman. So this will be fun. Okay. Do you buy a table or? I think we could buy a table. Yeah, you could buy a table, or I believe you can buy individual tickets. So I will okay. say I do miss comedy night because they used to go after Marie like all the time. We can win that. <laughs> How much are tickets? $50. Kim, did you have something else? Well, no, I was just going to say I was at a Wolf Swamp art show oh. about a week and a half ago. Yes, that was uh, February. It was a Wednesday night. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. And I guess that was a PTO slash LEAF sponsored event. So, yes, because um, they had the artists they, in residence they, working with the students. Yeah, they brought in artists mm -hmm. at each grade level, worked with the students, showed them the whole process, um, creative process, and I thought it was pretty cool. So I just I thought I'd tell it was pretty cool. Yeah. The, the results pretty of the artists in residence are extremely impressive. We funded the artists in residence. It's great. It was a great, great success. All righty. So moving along the agenda. We have the 2015-16 school calendar and the 2016-17 school calendar. Um, we had already approved the 2015-16 school calendar on March 24th of last year. However, there has been a proposal to change a professional development day that was originally scheduled for December the 4th move it to November the 3rd. November 3rd is an election day. The move would allow the district to participate in regional professional development with other area communities who do have that day off. Excuse me, it's not an election day for us. That's what I said. It's not, but the, the We don't have an election as a town on uh, the 3rd of November in uh, five years. Some surrounding towns do, though, and they all have it off, so we're trying to collaborate to provide some PD for our smaller groups, our speech pathologists, our OTs, PTs, who don't have an opportunity to get tons of PD. So we're going to group together, and we'll put one on, and Ethan Leto will put one on, and him and him will put a PD on, and so we're hoping to get all the same. But it's other cities that have. Yes, yeah, not ours, correct. Not towns. Right. Okay, all right. So, um... In addition to that, the administration has decided to eliminate the February late start day that was to be piloted this year that got snowed out. Um, feedback from parents was overwhelmingly negative regarding a late start versus an early dismissal. So the 2015-16 calendar now reflects that all of those um, early release days are truly early release and there will be no late start. So um, 
it does require us to vote on moving that professional development day from December 4th to November 3rd. Okay. So right. if we can do that first and then we can talk about sure. any other. So moved. I just it's a random day in the middle of the week for parents to take a day off of work. They've already got, they're already having to leave early for Monday's early release, and now they. But I think as a general rule, honestly, for the for kids at center school, having them go to school on election days, even though I know we don't have one this year, is a nightmare. Like my kids walk to school and they walk through the yeah. voting. So even though it's a, it might be a pain for the day, I think safety wise too, it's a good. Sort of habit to get into to not have school on election day. And truthfully, uh, this year I learned that many school districts do not have school that day, especially because in a lot of districts they hold their elections mm -hmm. in schools. In the school buildings. Mm -hmm. So, learn that. Diane, was there a second to John's motion? Yeah. Second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve changing the professional development day from December 4th to November 3rd as presented. Motion and seconded. Any other further discussion about that date? Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? <coughs> okay. Was there any other discussion regarding the 2015-16 calendar while we are on that calendar? Yes, as you're waving your pencil and at me. I'm sorry, I'm looking. I'm just wondering why or when we got in the habit of having half days on the 23rd of December for our good winter question. break. As long as I can remember. It, for, of the 23rd? It started a couple of years ago because uh, no. it was a Friday and we thought we would give people travel time to get where they were going. And I think that a concern that is very realistic um, is the number of hours that the students are in school. I know this winter is an anomaly, but given the fact that our new... Um, Normal. No, not our new normal. Our new hour we currently. No, who is the guy in charge? Commissioner Chester. Commissioner. Yes, Commissioner Chester. Sorry, Commissioner Chester. Um, not so new. You know, is not planning on giving any waivers. Is recommending that the school districts start before Labor Day, um, and is saying you know to be prepared to deal with the issue of snow days because and to be able to meet not only the 180-day requirement, but the 900 or 990-hour requirement. Um, given the fact that December 23rd is in the middle of the week, I'm not sure. That, I, I understand if it was done when it was a Friday going into a holiday weekend and you want to give people time to travel. I'm not sure that we need to have it. Well, at what point, though, can you, like, we're just kind of extending the vacation back. Well, why don't we just take a full day on the 23rd, and then we'll give them a half day on the 26th. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, you know, it, I don't have it, a stake in this. I'll just put it out there. If you don't, it comes to the shock to all of you. But uh, <laughs> I will say, I mean, like, from my limited recollection of this, those afternoons weren't exactly a productive time. So, you know, it's not, I mean, like, meeting an hour's requirements, you know, hour's requirements seems to be like, like a, a you know, excuse, right? kind of a... Well, that can be when their celebrations are versus the morning. Well, right, they can, get, right. they can so they finish off the right. yeah. And, I mean, if you're getting into a, a situation where, you know, hopefully we don't have another winter like this, but in case we do, having a little cushion in there versus needing to try to figure out, well, are we going to take away days in a break later on? Are we going to, you know, take away professional development from our teachers, which is so greatly needed? John? Uh, yeah, uh, this is a separate question. It has the 2016-2017 calendar been run past the LEA? We have a calendar committee that meets on this, but and it's they, made up of administrators and teachers. So we're not, we're not going to vote to adopt this? This yes. is yeah. what we're proposing. Mm -hmm. That. And then we're going to sit down with the LEA to... We already sat down with them. For 2016-2017? Yes. And they're in agreement? Yes. So are we going to vote on this tonight? Yes, it will be. Okay. The, the only worry is I did run um, add up to 900 hours, and we are right at the window right now. For 
this year for this year for 2014-15. So, right, and what the commissioner is saying that, it, and I worry about that in other years too. We're down to really tight, so that if we don't have a couple of extra hours of built cushion. in, the commissioner is saying people are going to have to go extra hours to make them up. They're going to have to go Saturdays. They're going to have to go vacations. And he, is and not he did this before. We we had a couple of winters ago where people had to make up. We we haven't been in that situation because we go back before Labor Day. And I, I do, you know, from reading his article in the paper this weekend, you know, he's not fond of endorsing adding time on to each day to make up all the time lost. You know, saying, oh, we'll add on 10 minutes a day for the rest of the school year. Um, he, he was very clear that that is not making up educational time. Yeah, well, you have the two things. You have the 180 days and you have, and the then you have the hours. or 990 hours. So, and we're, we're tight on the elementary hours. hours. So I would, um, I would like to move. Can I move? So I can't are we, move. Are we still talking about the 15 and the 16? Mm -hmm. no. Are we still talking about 15, 16? Yeah. Yes, we're still talking about 15, 16 so with the half day on December 23rd. Can I, I move that we make December 23rd a full day? Of school. Okay, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion on that date of changing it from a half a day to a full day? Uh, if I could, what's the rationale for that change? Because we are right near 900 hours, and by doing this, it's first off, you know, I think the 23rd half day started, like Marie had said, when the holiday started on the weekend so that it gave people a chance to travel. If it's on a Wednesday, why, you know, we're having the eve and the day of Christmas off on a Thursday, Friday, it gives us a, a cushion for the hours for students needing to meet the 900 hour or 990 hour requirement. Can we put it back to the committee for consideration, you know, before we, like, do, was it discussed with the committee that the calendar committee? Well, I think the calendar day. committee yeah. recommends, and we have they, the final they recommend approval. It, they recommend a half day. Oh. But I, I had not added up the 900 hours at the point on that when we met. I just did that last Friday. We're down to 901 hours for elementary. So, so if, if we, we have a winter like this, we would be in a position of not meeting the law. I guess my question is, can we pose that to the calendar committee and say, we need to find some more hours. What would you prefer or something? You know, like... I, yeah, we, we can go I back to them. I don't want to make more uh, work. I just, I, if there were if there was rationale for that and they'd rather take some hours from something else, um, an early then, release day. Right, I just want to bring up that the contract says the 15-16 school year calendar has to be approved by and in place by March 1st. If you don't want to approve it, and that's your right, we do have to go to the LEA and tell them and ask for an extension. an extension on that date. But the other so, question, at least what I'm hearing mm -hmm. or, or kind of interpreting well, I, from Michelle is do we, since this is a recommendation to the committee, mm -hmm. does the committee vote and have a final say or does the committee have to turn back to the calendar committee? It's a sensitive issue because this happened before and the, the school committee changed the calendar. We did talk about it. I did say I didn't know what would happen with the 23rd because of hours and because of um, looking into matters. Uh, the committee did authorize Kathy and I to be able to talk about this. Um, so I, I think we'd have to ask for an extension and, and let Kathy and I have an offline conversation report back to the type of the calendar. You can choose to put in the calendar that you want um, because ultimately you do approve it. It's your final decision. But um, I did let the teachers know that I wasn't sure what was going to happen with the 23rd. Well, the question that I have with the deadline being March 1st, mm -hmm. if, if we choose to say this goes back to calendar committee, and we'd like an extension, and calendar committee denies the extension, then the calendar gets approved the way it currently is. Right? Right, because you already approved it. Because we already March approved it. Anyway. So there's no guarantee that the calendar committee is going to agree to an extension. So we can, we can ask. 
right? Yeah. Well, but this has to be approved okay, so you're by saying, March 1st. Well, Kathy, we agree to meeting? an extension, and do we need to pull the calendar committee together? I mean, you've approved this once, so you're revisiting it. So I don't know about an extension, but I also know that what came into the conversation was attendance on that 23rd afternoon, that attendance historically has been dismal. So, you know, I mean, yes, there's maybe a, a celebration, but... I'm going to come up to the mic, Kathy. Sure. I think that... The calendar mm -hmm. committee, when they discussed the 23rd, talked about many different things and we were aware of the hours and the day but we also looked historically what attendance and we asked the administrators that were present what uh, what attendance was like and attendance tended to be very low so at that point we were doing kind of one of those you know you're in a catch-22 are you there for 10 kids out of your 22 in a class you know, it, it became, and we had that discussion open. Why, why would attendance be low? Everyone's required to be in work that day. No, not it's student, not staff. Student, student attendance. Student, student, student attendance, attendance, not staff attendance. Okay. I apologize. I oh, okay. Clear. <laughs> staff <laughs> attendance, we're all there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think there's a difference between, you know, looking at what we're offering um, to meet the state guidelines of how many hours of education we provide versus what a parent chooses to do. 100%. You know, and, and I'll go back to, you know, you're asking about an extension. You've approved this once. You are now changing it. That right. is up to you to make that decision. Okay. If you want to override the um, recommendation of the Committee of Administrators, Teachers, that's up to you as the committee because you mm -hmm. get the so, final step. So what I'm hearing is but that the committee was not aware that we were at 901 hours at elementary, and that's the law. So mm -hmm. this isn't even a matter of... So if we have one, so if we have one late start, we're... we're we're out of we're out of we're going we to have going to make up hours so right. so no late starts this year just so no no in 2015-16 <laughs> well no she said we're at 901 this year so right. we, we for 2015 right 2015-16 no, that 901 and a half hours. You're, you're oh. trying to plan ahead so that right. if this happens so, next year right? so for 15-16 for the calendar before you that's been approved once Elementary is in school for 901.5 hours. Right. The elementary hours are very, very tight. So, from Wait, so that means that on, on this calendar, if we have one late, one delay, one two hour delay, then we're, we have to have a makeup this day. This year, if we have another one, we're going to have to look at making up time. But, but on we're, this we're talking about, well, it depends on how many late starts you have. I had it factor in this year all the late starts we had because of inclement weather. So and when I check to see, it's not only we're going to June 24th, I have to check how many late starts we've had and how that cuts back on time on learning. Because the kids have to be instructionally in class for the 900 hours. And because we've had so many late starts, we're now at the, we're, we're at a, we're at a um, precipitous point where you, we could go beneath the 900 hours. So if we did it this year, we could do it another year. You're talking about 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. yep. when you talk right. like that. Yep. I just want to make sure. One. Okay. <laughs> yep. So, okay. So my my concern is, is I think the argument is we absolutely have to add a little bit more fluff time in here. But is that how... Is that a productive? I don't know where else you'd get it, Michelle. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not arguing that. I just feel bad because it seems like the administrators and every, I don't want to make that decision. I don't want to overrule them if they have specific reasons mm -hmm. for that with the knowledge that I have. Well, it was a nice thing to do and everyone enjoyed the half day off, but if yeah. you don't have time, you don't have time. Yeah. So sure. no, I just, I'm, I'm wondering if they would take it from another place and if this is the only op option. Then. Could I point out that there's no reason for them that I can think of? to go for a full day. They've got the half day already. So why should they vote to come in for a full day? If we turned it back to the calendar committee. Yeah. Right. I could still turn back and the I, calendar. And I can see an LEA member saying, we, we're going to get paid for half day. So why should we work for a full day? No, they get paid for a full day. What? They get paid for a full day. They get paid for a half day as if it was a full day. Correct. So, so why, why should, should they we come work in? a full day? 
Right. I was asking if no, they... I don't want to be ascetic about it, but uh, isn't that kind of... Well, let's just put this way. If we take no action now... Yeah, I don't think many of our employees think that way, to be honest with you, John. I mean, we're here. It, it's just looking at productive time while we're here. Yeah, but you this know? is... I, I, I agree with your premise. This is not a productive time. And, uh, I've been in, I was in the system for 31 I, years. I'm not disagreeing it with was, you. It's not productive at all to have a half day. It's, yeah, what we're saying kids is... Kids don't show up. And well, what goes on is usually dancing down in the gymnasium. You can take a chance next year will be oh, a better winter. Good. No, I, I don't mm -hmm. think we should do that. No, I just didn't know if there would be a better place to put more hours. The only other place would be to take it from professional development time, and I think that would be a disaster. Mm -hmm. we, we are so short of meeting time as it is already. I, I can think okay. of no other place to take it from. Um, Kim, did you have something you wanted to add? Because right now we have the half day at the end of the year, so we could add a couple of hours there if we do go over the 900, go under the 900 mark. But that's still tight. Last day but that's not really the time I'm school. learning. Okay. Well, that, doesn't, that feels less productive to me just <laughs> than the day before <laughs> than Christmas. Than the day before Eve. Christmas Eve. But no, Katie, that's a good question because I actually. This What's year, question, Katie? The, no, the 24 when she brought this whole thing up, like I about the, about the same I'm thing not this trying year. to be a Grinch by any means. I'm just thinking like fitting it in. Right, it's but, hard to to you know you think as a parent, you know, because who have kids in the system and and understanding that you know parents may choose to you know take off early for plans or whatever, but then we also have to look at it as administratively we've got to ensure it's our job to ensure that we provide the number of hours required by law so it is a difficult decision but like Maurice pointed out there's not a whole lot of fluff in the calendar of, of where to take things from not with federal and state holidays can I ask are we legally obligated to stay closed on days like Veterans Day and Columbus Day it's a Massachusetts thing. Yep. I moved here from a state where we actually, the kids went to school on those days, and they gave them the whole entire week of Thanksgiving off since it was a less productive. Because I, I, I don't know about you, but my kids the last two years, those two and a half days, like there were no Can spelling we things. That, actually, there were no. To get into consideration to try to find some time to do that. Yeah, but just because. You know what the answer out. is? Year-round schools. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we have a motion. It's, it's, it's half day there, or go full day last day. Those are the only two areas we you really do it, and okay. I wouldn't recommend that. So, all right. So we have a motion and a second on the table. We've been having discussions. So can we, Kim? So are we? Are we ready to vote on? changing December 23rd from a half a day to a full day in 2015-16. So all of those in favor of changing it to a full day, full instructional day. All in favor of December 23rd is a full instructional day. Four. Opposed? Three. Joseph, you don't Joseph get to vote. Sorry. Just like your first meeting. All right, so we now have the 2016-17 calendar that we need to approve. Would you like me to stay here? <laughs> Just stay right there. I'm sure there will be questions. Um, so I'll just open it up for discussion before even entertaining the motion because I see the pencil waving at me again. <laughs> Yes. Just the, the first thing that caught my eye, and I know it's not something that affects the students, but we have um, a school committee meeting scheduled for Passover, which is not cool. My not parents cool. will not like my that. Students. No, not cool. So I'm I'm just for, for what year are you on? I'm 17, right here. How am I supposed to know that's Passover? Because it says it on the <laughs> well, it's on the 10th. And there's our meeting on the 10th. We got you. Just, we can change our meeting date. Let's I look for the educational component. Yeah. What was the center? You scheduled hmm? school committee on the Passover. Passover. I know there's only one of a year, but you know. Hey. What, what day is that? It's, it's April, on, 10th. Uh, April 10th. April 10th. I was just following the way we've always No, I'm just giving you a hard time. Don't well, move with the good Friday. Friday. First, maybe 
So is there any question, comment, changes you'd like to see in the 1617 school calendar? Man, we go back early. I yes. have. I have a wow. question. Well, Labor Day's late. Yeah. Have no school in the town. No, no, I'm, no. Just flagging that there's a school committee meeting scheduled okay. for that. Yeah. I have a question. That will have to change um, years. So, does this, if we, by approving it today, does it leave room for um, Contact the possibility, because this is like two years away, um, of the state of Massachusetts going from no February and April and just a March break? There are a lot of surveys going back and forth right now. They're coming from the commissioner's office. Yeah. The superintendents have had to fill one out. Um, MASC is doing one. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of buzz about it, but it's come up before. We'll see where it goes. But does this, like, if we approve this 2016-2017 calendar today, does this does that leave us in a bad spot needing to adjust when other, if other districts move to that whole, if they, I mean, it's yeah, a big you have if, to revisit it. but it's a big if, you, you have to revisit it. This one's not as critical by contract. We just have to approve next year. You don't have to approve this but one this tonight. This one is for LHS, but right? We still they need to. this for Symphony Hall just to know the last day, but that's graduation. enough information, right? So well, it was, yeah, that we looked two years out at the request of the high school predominantly um, because of them being able to set their senior activities. Right. which was very, and I very think, important um, to them. I believe Connecticut is moving to changing their calendar, and they're doing it as a statewide initiative where they're getting rid of February and April and consolidating to March, and it's a two-year rollout plan. Okay. Um, they didn't have February break this year, did they? No. I don't know. That was for different reasons, though, I think. Joseph? Um, just, I don't know if we're discussing not doing two-year calendars, but as an officer, we found it really helpful. No, I think I think we want to keep doing like the two-year calendar. I think the question just is if, if the state is going to seriously look at eliminating two breaks and consolidating to one. I just don't think that they can. I, that's no. just kind of, I think that before they, if, even if they were to, even if Desi was to mandate it, or the legislature was to mandate it, I think the MTA would sue, and then they would end up in the Supreme Judicial Court, because there's labor agreements in place that specify the dates of these vacations. Oh, so it would be, probably have to be the same thing as Connecticut, like a rollout. A like rollout. Your, and not all districts in Connecticut are doing that, just because my second job is in Connecticut, and I run camps on our vacation time, and there are many districts still that have the full break, some of them short in February. If you were going to ever look at that, you should probably look at the amount of sickness right before February break. It's always very nice to kind of clear the germs out of the air in Isn't February. That why we have February break so that That's we can like used to get, mm -hmm. get yeah. them away and from the close quarters. Yes, yeah. and it has remained so. It always finds that those few days before February, the oh, you know awful. the sickness rate is just awful, and it's just kind of nice, as I said. And even kids coming back in and go like, "Oh, I was sick all vacation. You feel real bad." You but know, no, but, but that's you want but them. But it's you want them at home. <laughs> I would approve it because state law would supersede anything we do anyway. So if they change it, we would be mandated to change our calendar. But I would we think have to go back to the end of the impact bargain, and we'd have right. to go we through go all that to just to be honest with you. We'd have to do it. Not an SJC case. Just no. wanted to ask the question. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> and so now we're going to look at that December 23rd since the Well, this Friday. one, I, I feel like a Friday is a little bit more reasonable. Yeah. It's, it's a shorter break. It's just a Friday, I feel like, is... Well, but do we have the same problem that way? I don't think so because we, it's for Labor Day's years. late, so it's, we go back so it's early. Just, it, it will be the same problem for elementary. If we, it depends what happens down the road. But does it, if we go back so much earlier, Marie, does it, is it just, we just go back a day or like August 31st? Yeah. It, it, it won't matter. It just depends how many snow days, uh, how many Jewish late holidays. starts we have. The when calendar doesn't change at all. It's if you have significant number. I mean, I don't work at all until December. <laughs> I would suggest that you keep them the same. You can always revise it next year if we find out that things change and there's more time in elementary. But based on what I know right now, the time is too tight. Can I ask why, or if it's possible, maybe the only other times that we have the half days for elementary conferences, would it be possible to consult, like to have one half day for conferences? And two evenings? And two evenings. I think that would be easier for parents. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that would have to be negotiated. It would. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But maybe that, you know, that's the kind of thing I was talking about for 1516 in case that would have worked out. I don't mean to reopen it, but I, you know, in case that would be a That would give desirable. you a couple more hours. I don't know if it's it something would, that, that would have to be renegotiated because that's You'd part have to of the contract. It. Yeah. So that could certainly be something that's brought up as we're negotiating now, moving forward. But we could ask the teachers what's more important. Would they rather two evening, or would they rather keep it as is and go the full day on the 23rd? For the elementary. Because that would pick up a couple of hours. Trips. That would give you a little bit yeah, of I have mine in. buffer. Can we do that for the 1516, even though we just voted on it? That was the kind of thing I was saying. Let's ask them. And that see. has to, mm -hmm. but it has to be approved by March 1st. But so we're not going to have no. the time. Yeah. This, Not this. No, I know, I know. But I'm Michelle's saying asking back to the 1516. Okay. Could we go back and ask them to revisit it now and to get the union to? Well, you already voted on it. You already voted on your 1516 right. calendar. Right. But Michelle's wanting to open it up to revote to let them have the option to change parent conferences for 1516 as opposed to taking away the 23rd. And I was just saying that. We've got from we've got what six days. Well, in order even, to get it approved. Even then, you, I, I mean, your timeline's probably not realistic for that, right? What would that be? To get calendar committee back together to agree on. Well, what would they rather have their their recommended calendar changed or maybe reconvene and, and look and see if there was something else to add more time in? I guess that's what I'm looking to you. I think that always, if you're going to involve the stakeholders, you're always going to be better off to let somebody have a say rather than override what has been recommended to you. That's just how right. I work so as an, a, you know, um, to reconvene. I know they have given Marie and I some leeway as far as us being able to work a little bit away from the committee if need be as well. Um, that we can reconvene. I think we can get most people, what is it, March 1st though? No, oh, that's Sunday. That's, Sunday. Um, that's, that's a short timeline. Um, for the 15, 16, your pet are off probably staying where you are, in my opinion. Uh, and then whatever you want to do with 16, 17. Well, we have plenty of time with that, but I would plenty say definitely send right. it back and, to them. And since we're input. still in negotiations, we can certainly bring it up to the negotiating team of, you know, offering that as an option because that is something that's negotiable. What would that be? The, the that half day conferences. Is that not part of the contract? It is. Mm -hmm. Right. So that would be have to be something negotiated to Correct. ask that the elementary yeah, we, Kathy and I can do that offline without the whole committee. We do a memorandum of, of understanding, but she would talk to her people about tell that. me whether or not it's even something worth considering. Okay. So that's not normally a change like that we don't normally bring. Okay. So but that would it be is in the middle of negotiations. I don't know if you'd prefer which route you'd prefer to go. Well, that would be something that you two can we most can certainly talk out, about. Yeah. But it, I think the recommendation would be to say, instead of two half days for elementary conferences, of saying one half day and then one whole day, and instead of conferences being two half days during the school day and one evening conference, it'd be one set of conferences during the day and two evenings. So you're going to bring your teachers back an extra night? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. That's what okay. Michelle's yeah. proposing. I, I don't, well, think, I'm I don't asking think that's what they would rather that than lose a half day or something like that. Do you know like what I mean? I think that, you know, I mean, December. my teachers also could look at the feasibility of with um, all the grades being on power school, too. Um, is, such, is enough time allotted for? Is there too much time, not enough time allotted for conferences, too? You know, parents have. I think we're just talking music. elementary. Okay. And power school is an elementary. And elementary needs all that time right. because they see every parent. They do. Can I ask, Maybe just to, I don't mean to like harp on the parent-teacher conferences, but they're awesome, I love them, but why do we do the, the elementary and then a week later we do the middle school? Because having a kid in each, that is really tough to have like two half days for the elementary kid and then the next week two half days for the, so to juggle. Well, it's historically been done. I don't yeah. know why they do that. Is well, it? I think, I, number one, they've done it differently, too, but also now with the middle schools being on trimesters, that's changed a little bit about when the middle school conferences are. And now that Glenbrook and Williams are more aligned, aligned time-wise, too. So I think before, um, when we were on trimesters or they kept the quarterly 
schedule for the middle school conferences, they were closer together. But at that point, you, you know, you kind of want them somewhere near term end. Yeah, and what, can we? Would it be possible to like in October the twenty the twentieth and the twenty first are middle school conferences, and then or elementary, or elementary and then the twenty seventh and twenty eighth are middle school. Is that because some staff serve both buildings historically? That's, why historically, that I done? believe that's probably why. Because your adjustment staff. councils go between two, but you may have some key players that have to be at both meetings. But it would be just be adjustment councils, really. And I also think the community at one point didn't want, and, and I, I say this politely, all the children at the shops at the same time when friendlies <laughs> used to be here and stuff. I think that they were kind of doing damage control. I, and I'm I being mean, honest, having been here 28 years, yeah, no, I'm just, 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 we always yeah. appreciate the business. Yes. <laughs> little Peach. Yeah, it was Rinaldi's too. Little Peach, wild <laughs> memories. <laughs> I mean, having grown up here as well, it was historically, I think that's just where. Just to try and add the, mm -hmm. is it, do you think it's still an issue? Is it something that we can work on, yeah? That's yeah. why we were trying to do that. Right? I can say historically, I, we didn't want them all at Starbucks either. There's not much left of the shops to like elementary schoolers coming. Yeah. Like friendlies was big. It used to be too friendly. Maybe when the shops yeah. expand, there'll be more places for them to go. There you go. So we need a game place. I know it's nitpicky. It's just it. I dread those. Uh -oh. Oops. Sorry. I think we just approve this as it is, and if we have to fix it, fix it. All right. So can I have a motion? So moved. Are we changing the second. 23rd? No, we're leaving it as it is for now. Second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Clarify the motion. What are we leaving as? For 2016-17 school calendar as it is presented. You always okay, what if we're short of time that year again? Me. We'll have we're the so same conversation a year from now. And well, I think I thought you guys were going to discuss how we could make it, you know, <laughs> right. what would be, what would the teachers prefer so that we can amend it, Yeah, right? I wouldn't vote so on this what, calendar until we have that discussion. I was just going to say, why don't we just say we'll table the vote okay. until there's further discussion right. between administration and the LEA to Does determine. That screw with the high schools reserving at Symphony Hall? No, because the end date won't change. It's just what we would do to make sure we hit that 900 hour mark. Can we show the high schoolers so they can make their... Yeah, Paul will do that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I so the framework's good. It's just the yeah. question of the half days. If you get this draft done yeah. structurally, then we'll have no problems with booking that year's. Okay. He's going to have to look on the draft, and you're not going to open it. Correct. Just gonna hold on We're going to table the vote until there's been time for discussion between the calendar committee and administration. Oh, or Kathy and, or Kathy they and, and, and Marie. Kathy. But well, this is vote, bigger than what we our thought. Our vote about 10 minutes ago. Was for 2015-16. I thought we were voting on Friday the 23rd. For 2015-16. Which That's was Wednesday. Friday, Friday the no, it was Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. For uh, John, we already did 16. a motion. Well, okay. The one concern I have about that vote is you've changed a calendar that's been published a year. If you have a staff member that has already documented flights because some of the flights that go can go, you know, a year or more in advance, then, you know, you've made a change that's already been published. Mm -hmm. And that would be something, Marie, just to bring to your attention now yep. as a heads up. Because yep. this is something that has been published and approved. So, mm -hmm. you know, you by changing the game a little bit, there may be an anomaly here or there, but I figure I just got to be proactive than reactive and throw that out there for you. So, no, let's throw in. Yeah. Can I admit publicly, I thought we were voting on the 2016 17, Friday the 24th. That's what I voted for. I'm the 23rd. We didn't vote for? And I thought you guys voted 4 to 3 to go for a full day on the 23rd Friday. We were that vote was for the 2015 2016. Yeah, but I Wednesday. thought it was the 2016 17. So you're I have no interest miscounted? in changing the Wednesday of the December 15th. That's how you voted. That's how you voted. You voted. No, I, I, I'm telling you, I did not vote for that. I voted, I was under the impression I was voting for this 16 17. Are you against it on both calendars? Changing the I'm time? I'm against it. Uh, I think we should have a full day on the 16th, 17th, December 23rd. Fine for okay. me on the half day for the 15th, for the 15th, 16th. Wow. That's how you I voted. That's how you voted. That is how you voted. That's how you voted. You voted to keep the half day on the 
2015-16 calendar for the Wednesday the 23rd. Ooh, I didn't. So John was confused. Is I what didn't. Yeah. I was under the impression I was voting 16-17. Okay, but John, if we... Well, you can't say it works out. Okay, fine. Right, can we make a motion to reopen the vote? I, I thought we were keeping 2015-16 as is because it's been published. And I, I, I make a motion to change, to redo the vote. Motion to reopen discussion. <laughs> So, well, my position is, for, well, here, to clarify, but I think 2015-16 has been broadcast, it's been out there, then let's yeah. leave it as is. Let's, everybody pause for two seconds, we're going to just look at the handbook on how we reopen this, and then we can vote appropriately, and then we'll move forward. Okay. Maybe we don't have record I think it's a... Do you want me to read what I recorded? The recorded vote was to move the, tw the December 23rd... 2016 to 15. a full day, and 15. the vote was four in favor of that to make... You're saying the wrong date. 15. 15. 15. 2015, December 23rd, to make that a full day. It was four in favor of to make it a full day, and three against to make it a full day. So the vote passed. You did make it a full day of school. They we, did make but it, it was a, But it was a split decision, just so you know that. It wasn't unanimous. But it was 4-3. Four, 4-3, three. Four, three, and you voted against making it a full day. Correct. Okay. Except I thought we were talking about okay. Friday. I understand. Okay. All right. I just wanted to... So is your vote the vote. same? So are you in favor of full day or half day on the 15th? Oh. The 23rd of 2015. The Wednesday. I'm in favor of the half day. So that's how you voted. That's how you voted. Yes. So we're okay. Okay. No, but you guys voted to change it. I'm. I, it's yeah, what and I think I'm right. The yeah. vote was four three. Yes. I think. All right. Why don't we just? But the, can I what I'm trying to get at is, aren't we going to open? Uh, we're opening up fifteen sixteen when it's boarded, isn't it? Isn't it? No, it's dumb? not. Well, Kathy just said teachers have flights, and it was it was brought forth, John that the calendar committee wanted it amended to change their professional development day. Since they opened it up to be amended, that's when we asked about the half day before Christmas in light of the number of hours the students are going to school regarding late starts, delayed starts because of weather and snow days. So since it was already opened up by the calendar committee's request to change their professional development day, that added, that allowed us to have further discussion on any amendments that we wish to, excuse me, make to that calendar. And the vote on that was four in favor of changing the 23rd from a half day to a whole day, Wednesday the 23rd, and three opposed. And okay. you were part of the opposed. Correct. Then we've moved on to the 2016-17 calendar, which is what we've been talking about. And it's been recommended to table the vote until Kathy and Marie <coughs> can discuss options for how to address the time for late starts and snow days. Because that calendar, 2016-17, does not need to be voted on tonight. 2015-16 had to be voted on before March 1st. So that's why we had to... And so to we voted to change. So that means we're going to have to have a meeting. The calendar committee is going to have to meet the elder. No. We have the final say-so on the calendar. School committee has the final approval on the calendar. Well, we got in a lot of trouble, and Tom, maybe you could correct me on this. <laughs> when a former chair of the school committee came in and said, I don't like the Labor Day agreement. And without telling some of us who are new to the committee, I'm not approving it. Do you remember this? Yes. And it was, I think we could, it cost us court costs. 
My because we tried to override what was an established protocol for the way things should be done. And I'm in favor of maintaining the protocols of how things are supposed to be done. I don't want this committee picking up a $10,000 fine or labor cost. My recollection of that, though, John, was yeah. that the committee adopted a, a calendar that had not already been vetted through the calendar committee. That's not what's happening here. The committee is voting to change a calendar that the calendar committee has already agreed on and brought forward to the school committee for consideration. The school committee has final say on adoption of the calendar mm -hmm. by contract. But the superintendent at that time did not raise an objection to what the then chair was irate about. John, I was so, explicit at calendar committee that I did not know which way school committee would go because of the time. Mm -hmm. And when I, after that meeting, went and calculated the time on learning, we are critically close to not making 900 hours at the elementary school. So, so at this point, I can't recommend to you not. I can't recommend a half day because we may not. We could put ourselves in a position of not having enough face time with kids and have to add schedules, add time onto learning at other points in the school year. Okay. May I make this suggestion? Because I know you probably want to get out here before midnight. Um, why don't you've already dealt with the 15 16 calendar and we're tabling the tabling 16 16 17 why don't we go back to the committee with it because yep. there's no rush for that it doesn't have to be done by this Sunday like the uh, four, uh, 15 16 does. Yep. right we can go back leaving the skeleton in place the framework in place so that the high school can make their um, graduation prom dates etc cetera, etc cetera. I think that's important, but I don't because I don't believe the beginning date and end date are going to change. Yeah. Uh, just the inner workings of it. And maybe they have suggestions on how we can meet the 900 hours. Correct. Correct. That critical point. So we're happy to do that. But right. based on what we know tonight, I recommend right. you hold with the vote you had. Okay. Do we need to approve anything for the framework of a start date and end date so that the high school can? plan their graduation, secure their graduation prom I venues, et cetera. I think you've enough of a framework. Nobody here is talking about changing that. The framework. Just all okay. we're talking about is would we flip a half day. So okay. I I think Paul Dunkley has enough information to book Symphony Hall. Okay. Nobody's planning on talking about the start before Labor Day, right? Mm. No. So we'll be okay. No, we weren't talking about any of that. Yep. Would so we're we be, okay. Would we be able to sign a contract? Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. So we are tabling the vote. It's more just about the half days. That's the only Okay, that's on public record table. now, just letting you know, mm -hmm. so that he can make the contracts. Yes, yes. I yes. that's what I wanted to make yeah, sure. No, that I, the, I the just want to make sure, you know, Mr. Dunkley can make his arrangements, his arrangements. as he speak. Absolutely. Thank you. You are welcome. Moving on to preschool rate. Great. The Finance Subcommittee considered the preschool rate for 2015-16 and are recommending no change. Um, the rate increased in 2014-15 to $2,000 for the year with a $50 discount offered if the full year's tuition was paid by September 1st. Uh, can I have a motion? Sure. I move on the recommendation of the Finance Subcommittee that the School Committee set the tuition rate for the 2015-16 school year to $2,000 and offer a $50 discount if tuition is paid in full by September 1st, 2015. And motion, do I have a second? Second. 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 Any discussion about this? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? No. Everyone was in favor? Was it a unanimous vote? Yeah. Okay. The Finance Subcommittee also considered the tuition rate for the 2015-16 school year. I move on the recommendation of the Finance Subcommittee that the School Committee set the, mo set the tuition rate for out-of-state students for the 2015-16 school year at $13,450. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Is that our appropriate question? Michelle? Mm -hmm. Does that cover our costs? The um, amount is reflective of the per student expenditure for the fiscal year 2013, which was the most recent information that uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education had available at the time the Finance Subcommittee recommended it, and that is what the law allows, that you can charge up to your per student expenditure. Any further discussion? That was my question, too. All right, so all those in favor? Aye. Okay. 
in our packet we have a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Paulo Ferrer. Ferrera. Ferrera, okay. Of Enfield requesting to have their daughter accepted as a tuition paying student for grade nine for the 2015-16 school year. Mr. Tom Landers, principal of Palmetto High School, has reviewed her records, interviewed her, and is recommending her acceptance to the Longmeadow Public Schools. I move on the recommendation of the superintendent of the school committee, except Megan Ferreira of Enfield, Connecticut, as a tuition paying student beginning in 2015-16 school year in grade nine at Longmeadow High School. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So this is new to me. Is this something that we offer anybody to come to? Out of state, out of state. only. Correct. If you live in Massachusetts, you have to attend school in your community where you live unless you are a member of, say, the School Choice Program. Um, Medco. But the, Medco. But this is only for students who live out of state. Historically, we never really have more than one or two at any given time. I don't think we have one right now. We do not. I don't think we've had one since 2011. Why is it that like East Longmeadow couldn't come if they wanted to? The, the they, law does not yeah. afford her yeah. students from another Massachusetts community unless it's through one of those programs. Got it. Which we'll be adopting next. All right. All right. Any further discussion about these tuition requests? All right, call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. For school choice, 2015-16, the administration is recommending accepting school choice students at the kindergarten level only. This past year, we accepted four students in the full day kindergarten program and making the same recommendation for 2015-16. I move on the recommendation of the finance subcommittee. Nope. Um, administration, I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. I move on the recommendation of the administration that the school committee accept students in the school choice program for the 2015-16 school year as follows, grade level, kindergarten, full day, number of seats, four. Acceptance into the school choice program will entail parents uh, of those students pay the $2,750 fee associated with the full day kindergarten program. A motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? I'll second it, but I have a question. Okay. Uh, that's the fee that we're charging for the full, full day full day kindergarten. In the past, didn't school choice just come in without a fee? Not in the full day program. They were required to pay the tuition similar to a Long Meadow resident. In the past, we have opened up some slots in the half-day program for kindergarten, but it's like... It's a school choice program only for full day. Um, no, the committee has to stipulate where they're opening seats. Based on the motion I just made, the answer is yes, it's only for full day. So we could have said it can be in the half-day kindergarten program without a fee. Correct. And may I ask why we're not saying that? Um, Do we know if there will be a half-day program next year? Well, we, There's just some money, I know. We don't know whether or not there will be a half-day program, but this year we only have one section. Mm -hmm. And by adding four more slots, it most certainly could impact the size of the class. So uh, knowing that we have seven full-day or eight full-day sections this year gives us a little more latitude on placement of those students without impacting class size. Okay. So that's not going to get us in a contradiction with the state law? It will not. School choice. Okay. It will not. Fine. Thank you. Can someone explain to me now what the school choice is that's from out of state um, still? No. no school state choice state. allows students in neighboring districts or in sort of neighboring districts. Massachusetts. Massachusetts district. to apply for admission to neighboring to other school districts. That other school district pays their tuition essentially or their per pupil cost up to a certain amount. Uh, every year. So historically, this committee, and why we still carry a little bit of a reputation, it, it used the school choice, uh, admitted a lot of students, um, kindergarten, first grade, sixth grade, ninth grade. Um, and that's great, and it certainly did a lot for the district. But sometimes when those students graduate out, there becomes a plateau and you lose 
that revenue. So it put us in not a great financial situation, which is why we accept smaller numbers these days. Um, so school choice students, um, like I said, they typically come, I mean, we get them from Springfield, Agawam, West Springfield, East Long, not really East Long Meadow, one one. Uh, also, yeah, so. Is it a lottery as well? Like we just get, you know, we open it, we get applications and then pick out of a hat basically? That is correct. We will post on the website that there's an application and a deadline for a submission. And then we, uh, we will have a lottery, usually the chair of the committee, myself and Diane meet and we place all the applications out and the chair randomly picks um, from that pile to fill the slots. They're all face down. And Correct. How many, typically, how many applications do we get? 30, 35 or so. Okay. And the town that the child is in that's coming in here pays our per pupil cost? It a little less. pays $5,000. The maximum amount for regular education is 5000 for the school choice program. So their state funding, Chapter 70 money, gets reduced by the number of students from their district that are enrolled in the choice program and attending school in another district. And then we receive funding from the state for the number of kids we have, currently about 45 students that are here in La Meadow through the choice program. Mm -hmm. Has it ever been merit-based or anything instead of lottery? No, the law specifies okay. that it's lottery. The only exception is that for siblings of uh, students already here through the choice program, they have a sibling. If they're coming into a, a grade where their slots have been approved by the school committee, they receive uh, preferential treatment. So they get the slots first before you do a lottery. Okay. And we'll get to decide where these four seats go, correct? In terms of the, the redistricting and everything, we'll get to say where we have room for them. Yeah. The administration has decided that in the past, okay. correct? Any further discussion? So the town they're coming from is the mm -hmm. and, and is there any reason why it can't be more than the 2750 since we're subsidizing some? Mm -hmm. Is there any reason why it can't be more than the fee that we're charging for Long Meadow students? Is that what you're asking right. me? Yes, because um, you know part of that we're we're using our own budget for to subsidize it. I'm yeah. assuming. Well, I think you'd be looking at an issue where you are charging uh, students in that program more than you're charging residents to attend the program. So I think it could be looked on as uh, not being it's fair and equitable. Yeah. 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 So I, I would say there could be an inequity issue. Gotcha. I just didn't know since we're allowed to charge tuition. To the out-of-state tuition oh, out of is state, much more I flexible okay. than the choice program. Okay. Because for school choice, there has to be a reason why they're not being in their town. No, there doesn't. No. no. It is it's purely just better. an application and a random draw process. It might be on their way to work. Th they just, uh, but, yep. But like 2750 is not the per pupils rate for that kindergarten program. But the but choice the law is not dictated by the per pupil expenditure okay. amount. The out of state tuition program is. And does the their city where they're coming from will still pay the fee for them to attend the school no. choice? No. Five thousand dollars. Right. So Correct. really it's their Right, it's up to five thousand subsidizing the But they still, so it's not just hours. the twenty-seven fifty that we're sort of receiving on as tuition. It's really the uh, right seven. The thought is that these are open slots, so it's not costing the district additional money to allow these slots to be filled with students from another district. So you don't need to necessarily charge the full per student expenditure amount because mm -hmm. these slots. They're vacant anyway, so you have the capacity in the district to allow the students to attend. We have to have a certain number of slots for school choice? School committee makes that determination. We do it because it promotes diversity in the town. Mm -hmm. We don't have as much diversity, so by um, opening up Metco seats and school choice, we really increase that and bring that nice experience to our kids. But there are yeah, always no, open I mean, slots. We're not adding teachers. Yeah. Um, if a student is special education and school choice, then Springfield would pay a year out what their special education or costs whatever. are. That's what I was and like I said, historically, you know, at least the last at least six years, the committee has made a very conscientious decision to open up 
a smaller number of slots instead of a greater number of slots, um, and primarily in the first and kindergarten levels, more recently just in kindergarten. Um, so, John. If I could, just this was passed when Governor Weld was in power, and it's been it's part of his general drift, which eventually led towards uh, charter schools. You're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're taking $5,000 away from, say, Chicopee or Springfield, and giving it to Long Meadow in the case of a student coming from Chicopee or Springfield. Right. Okay. So, that was very nice of the governor. He didn't do any any heavy lifting for that one. But be aware, it's you're taking money away from another district when we do this. It's also costing us to have a child. So, and Long Meadow likes it because you don't have to raise taxes that much. Well, well, is that part of the reason we accepted it? Be here. Okay. Mm -hmm. we are a little history. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I understand. I just, I get on. I, don't, I don't understand the logic of why it can only be twenty-seven fifty versus five thousand. Because that's but the amount that the, the committee approved for a full day kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So that's the amount applied to. We're charging we our residents. Correct. We can't bill them more than what we charge the residents of Correct. the community. Basically, right. They really become our. They really become our students, and right, they are right. in every right that our students would have. So when you accept them in the program, there is one kicker too, though, isn't there? Because some of these might come with special needs requirements, mm -hmm. thereby increasing their costs for Correct. our costs for educating them. And they're sending district <coughs> too, because there's an incremental bill back to the district in which they reside. Yeah, Marie just said that, right? Yeah, it's a year after. It uh, follows a year, second year that they're here. Very and, and once partner. they're here, they stay here for the remainder of their education, unless they move out of state. But they remain a Long Meadow student till they graduate. And they don't pay in subsequent years. Correct. Got it. Yeah, if, this, this, if we didn't does. charge for full day kindergarten, then they wouldn't be charged. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. We have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, the lottery for Metco seats will be done April of 2015. Available seats will be filled at random by grade level. Currently, there are 37 Metco students in Longmeadow. Four of the Metco students are seniors. So the administration is recommending the acceptance of four Metco students at the kindergarten level only. School placement will be determined by the administration at a later date. I move on the recommendation of the Finance Subcommittee that the school committee accept students in the Metco program for the 2015-2016 school year as follows. Grade Hi. level, kindergarten, grade level number seats, kindergarten, full day, four. John, might I just ask that you amend that to the recommendation of the administration? Uh, okay. It's uh, not the finance, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Thank you. So, so I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. second. <clears throat> All right, any further discussion about Medco lottery? I feel bad that Sandy's been here this late. Oh, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a minute. So She's sitting real and it's quiet. All work. Relatively. All, work. all right. Any further discussion on Metco? All right. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? All right. I was going to ask, is that the same random selection? And Mr. Clark said no. Well, I didn't know. Now it's I'm hard to They register in Springfield, and Springfield holds a lottery. And it's a digital lottery. Okay. And there is... There's no provision for siblings. I think Choice has a provision for siblings. Yeah, it does not. Cool. All right. So can we move on to the warrants? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I move the school committee approve the warrant batch number 2200 of the school lunch fund, FY15, uh, dated February 27, 2015, in the amount of $63,081.68. Sixty-eight cents. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I move the school committee approve the warrant batch number two seven seven two um, of the general operating fund FY fifteen, dated February twenty seven two thousand fifteen, an amount of three hundred and forty one thousand one hundred seventy one dollars and seventy five cents. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 
All right. That's it. We do have a consent agenda. I move on the recommendation of the superintendent that the school committee approve the consent agenda for the February 23rd, 2015 school committee. What? Yeah, meeting as presented. I forgot it was February. Second. <laughs> Motion in a second. All those in favor? Okay. We do have minutes, um, and I would recommend that for executive session minutes they be approved but not released. I move that the school committee approve the minutes of the executive session for February 9th, 2015 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? I wasn't Opposed. there. Sorry. Abstain? I'm abstaining. One. Not two. Two. Yeah, you, didn't you say one? Oh, I thought you raised your hand. One. Just Michelle. I was abstaining no. too because I John wasn't there. And Michelle are both abstaining. So okay. you're abstaining. I was just saying there was one abstention. Uh, That's all I'm You're not abstaining. Well, I'm speaking for myself. I didn't yes. know. And I'll speak abstaining. for me too. Two two that makes two. I'm just one of one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to talk to me. That's the new man. <laughs> Is that what Engage New York looks like? <laughs> okay, keep going. I move that the school committee approve the minutes of the February 9, 2015 school committee meeting as presented. Sign in. Select board meeting. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? One. Are you abstaining? No. <laughs> Okay, let, let Katie read now. I'm good. Go ahead, Michael. No. You're doing an excellent job. What did I say? Nothing. You're doing great. Okay. I move that the school committee approve the minutes to the February 4th, 2015 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Those are Okay. I move that the school committee approve the minutes of the executive session for the January 26, 2015 school committee meeting as presented. Motion, do a second? Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Abstain? And I move in a strange turn of events that Sorry. the school committee approved the minutes of the February 10th, 2014 <laughs> school committee meeting as presented. Yeah. Why, you ask? They weren't approved last year. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. <laughs> I, I think it says 26. We, he skipped the I don't know. We've got to go back to do the 26th. Oh, I'll meeting. go back to that, but I, I was distracted. So we're on the February 10th, 2014, as presented. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? And last but not least, I move that the school committee approve the minutes of the January 26, 2015 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? And uh, you want to move? All right. Yes, please. I move that the school committee adjourn into executive session for the purposes of strategies related to collective <coughs> bargaining with Unit A to reconvene into open session. This motion requires a roll call vote. Could, could we not move to return to open session? You'd like me to strike that? I would like you to strike that and start over again. Let me, re let me begin again. Thank you. I move that the school committee adjourn into executive session for the purposes of bargaining as it relates to uh, strategy. Yeah, strategy as it relates to bargaining with unit A, not to reconvene into open session. Okay, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, roll call vote, Liz. Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much. Aye. We Aye. will see you again in March. So lucky. Have a great evening. Bye, Kathy. Stay warm. Bye. Bye. Thank Mercy. you. Bye, Kathy. You will be school tomorrow. No. How, all right. What if we get my help? You can't start your car. You drove about delays, but, you know. Here's the thing is, she doesn't need it. Uh, we we yeah, can't have, according to Ruth, we can't have an hour delay because no, we'll be a nine hour delay. Exactly. We'll be at that. If it's AC walk, it's 45 minute delay. I don't know how it is. 45 minutes?